just leaving Camp Covey. Drove a station wagon to Camp Govey. And uh, brought the wife with me, she's driving it back. It's my cigarette smoke. That's one of those cars. I'm not sure if I have everything, but I think I have enough. Where'd that park pump go? Oh, it's in the backpack. Yeah. <clears throat> I brought an extra park pump just in case. That's not good. I don't expect any problems with the bike rack. I hear it creaking, but it's got way less weight on it than on the air two trips. I left the rain fly at home altogether. And uh, I sure hope the goddamn hose is in the way. I don't think so. I think I only have six meals with me. One for tonight. It's 11.20, 11.15, 11.20 now. So, no lunch today. And, uh, two meals for tomorrow, two meals for the day after, and then one for the last day. And the wife will pick me up at the Matlock store, hopefully, or somewhere on Shelton Matlock Road around dinner time on uh, oh, Wednesday. Today's Sunday. I got a uh, oatmeal and Slim Fast for like extra food if I. Spend an extra day or two out here, I've got enough stuff with me. Especially if it's like a zero day, I'll be okay. I am expecting to lose a little weight. But it's only a three night trip, so. Honestly, with the elevation gain, tonight or tomorrow, depending on when I do it, it's pretty inevitable I'm gonna lose weight. <clears throat> yeah, I gotta look out for potholes. Remember there's potholes on this road. Potholes and cracks. No, I didn't bring my big spare bike rack bracket either. I've only got a little teeny piece of it that 
I think should break first. But if it breaks the big one, we're gonna be mixing up epoxy on the side of the road. Feels good to be out here though, instead of cooped up in the car. My knee actually feels better now. I'm so tall that I don't fit in cars very well and when I get a lactic acid buildup in my right knee when I'm driving, I hurt that knee the other day on that Capitol Forest ride. Man, that lactic acid comes fast with it. <coughs> Slightly inflamed right now. So it feels better to be on the bike. Wife seemed pretty pissed off about the whole thing today, to be honest, she had a headache. But then when she was finally, when we finally pulled over to get the bike out, she was just a sweetheart. Double checking some of my stuff and it was cute. No sandwich though. I asked her, can I get a sandwich? We don't need lunch meat right now. So we uh, finished the rest of the lunch meat from the camping trip last night. We have French dips. It was worth it. <laughs> it was pretty good. <clears throat> Jesus. <clears throat> see it though so I've got to just do it by braille one click I'll leave the phone off here. Until I get to pass that turn for Browns Creek and just make sure I'm still on 23.
looking at uh, 15 or 20 miles today. Depends on how far I make it up to Church Creek Hill. I definitely want to get over there to that Church Creek uh, Trailhead Road. I think it's called 600 or something. I don't really care how far I make it up it, but I definitely want to get to that fucking road to get down to the ways. <clears throat> Off the beaten path, you know. And then from there on out, it'll just be how, how good things are going today. Funny, the smooth payment takes a tiny bit more effort than that ship seal back there with these tires. The tires must kind of mushroom out and have a better contact patch than with the individual stones of the ship seal. I was having trouble getting all my fucking shit uploaded, so I bought a 512 gig <coughs> car. That's what we got in there now. It's kind of risky because you can lose everything in one shot. But should get me through a fair chunk of the trip. Maybe all of it, but I kind of doubt it. I gotta loosen up my grip on the handlebars. Holding on tighter doesn't help it. Bike handles like shit no matter what. I got that feeling that I forgot something. That's pretty normal. <laughs> I know I have too much though, even with how little I got. I got my big fleece with me, even though it's probably only gonna get down to 58 degrees every night. socks this time though. Went with the lighter Dickies work socks. Crew length. Just so I don't quite get as hot as last time but at night they won't keep me as warm either. I got two pairs so I can swap them and dry them out still if I need to. I gotta tell you, I, I normally bring little socks everywhere, just in case, even if I never wear them. 
I definitely saved my ass in the last trip. Oh. But also, I mean, my feet were hot the whole time. I don't know, the hiking boots are probably always going to be hot. But I just thought I'd go with more of a middleweight deal. Mountain bike socks are just too useless. They're just too thin for the Gore-Tex boots. I need some, something can absorb, but something that keeps me cool too. Oof. Too. I should have slowed down for that. Too bright. These cracks are no joke sometimes, man. You can't tell until you're right on it. <sighs> so last time I wasn't here until day two. That's why I said, hey, can, can we go in the wagon, you know? And it works out good for when she picks me up Wednesday afternoon. You know, the fucking wagon's low on gas now. I gotta send her some money. <sighs> Wish my financial aid would drop for the semester. Things are tight now. It's gonna be really tight next April and May. Until I get a job. It's gonna be tough. I don't think I heard that back tire up enough, man. It's more than it was after I pumped it up by hand in Easton. But I think it probably needs more. I don't know, it's a tough, tough call because I left the thin inner tube and in the uh, undersized inner tube that stretched the fuck out to fit this big tire. And so I don't want to inflate it crazy high. I got two new inner tubes in the backpack. I just decided this one was working so well. I couldn't believe it just sat there and didn't leak at all. It lost less air than the front in the weeks it sat in the hallway. So this inner tube has my respect, okay? But I don't want to put it like 60 PSI because it'll just get even thinner, you know? I think I put it at 45 or something. Which really sounds good, but I look down and it looks really shrimmed out. I don't think it'll leak on me. I think it'll explode if it does anything. I got the extra tire. That lightweight WTV tire it used to be on the front. Cutting the frame bag here. Here's the river. I don't know, I can't remember. Skokomish, I think.
I think there might be a good view of it. Not here. Yeah, no, there's not actually. I think right by that campsite up here, but I can't remember if I could see it well or not. I don't know, I'm not optimistic about you guys being able to see it. Yeah, I don't think so. There was this guy camped here for weeks, I guess. It's right here on the side of the road. I had seen him and I thought it was a weird place to camp. I come out here to be away from the road personally. Uh, yeah, David said he'd been out here for a couple weeks. Mr. Dave Rowan, author of Around the Olympics on a Mountain Bike, and other fine books. Yeah, he's got the Church Creek in there. But he recommends uh, taking a different road and then using an abandoned section of fire road instead of using the Church Creek Trail until, until it crosses the Church Creek Trail very near the top. Now, I'm a little skeptical of that now. It's, the book's pretty old. <clears throat> and so hopefully 600 works out for me. I'll let him know. Maybe even send this video, huh? It would be a pretty cool book to do an update to. Same old squeaky seat. Yeah, the seat's just not very happy with my ratchet strap going into it. <laughs> but a cheap seat with solid steel rails is the seat to use for that. The replacement I got has already been on the shelf for a couple of years in case one of these seats goes out. It has hollow titanium rails or hollow rails of some kind. I don't really want to be strapping a load to it. Probably hollow for a molly, but the thing is, you know, how hollow, how thin a wall that's proprietary, they're not going to tell you. And so it's not like I'm afraid of hollow, I'm just afraid they're going to be chintzy. And so solid, I know, is solid. <sighs> you 
know, we're just rolling along between 800 and 1,000 feet right now. We're not even doing our climbing yet. We aren't doing any climbing until after Browns Creek. Not sure how I'm going to do the nutrition stuff today. I should probably do cliff bars first. I had some trail mix in the car. I have one more bag of trail mix. I think I'll save that for later today. Uh, I also have the goo gel things filled up. That's the last of it I bought. There's no more goo till next year. But I think I'll save that for later today in case I get sick to my stomach. If I'm trying to do some stupid climbing. So I'll uh, hit the cliff bars first. Try and get through three of those. Why then we should be well up 600 road. If all goes well. And the shade. And I can hit the gel. <clears throat> if I want something solid and I don't feel like a cliff bar, I can have a trail mix. And I'll have another gel in there for if I need it. Which I might just use to kind of get rid of it. Or I might uh save it for the for Tuesday we might be doing some climbing too on 23 after after Satsup Satsup Center looks like there's some climbing oh it's getting cooler here I figure I'd be in the shade more than last, more than uh, green water to Ellensburg, you know, so I didn't bring the big hat. I'm trying to leave as much shit as home as I possibly can. This is all very neat up here. Much neater than last time. Still going with two pillows though. Wish I could do two sleeping pads, but. The thermo rest I have is just weighs a fucking ton and doesn't fit anywhere. So I'll just have to wait. Next year, we'll see. I'm curious about the new air mattresses. I always like the old thermo rests that are uh, kind of inflated on their own, but they're so heavy. I see everyone with these super light air mattresses now, but. I'm not trying to be an air mattress mechanic and patch it all the time. So I'm hoping there's some sort of a middle solution. <sighs> that uh, is basically an air mattress with sort of a, a little bit of a thicker layer on it, you know. I never liked air mattresses like for car camping, so I don't know. I'm pretty skeptical of these backpacking ones, and they're really expensive. But I definitely, my foam pad isn't enough. I get bruises on my uh, hips when I sleep on my side. So, let's figure something out next year. Not this year.
trying to stay in the saddle as much as I can until I get past Browns Creek. I remember I kind of walked up the hill after Browns Creek. I don't know why. I don't know if I'll have to walk it this time, but definitely want to stay in the saddle until then. I doubt I can get to Sats of Lakes today. That would be the ultimate goal today. Uh, I'd probably be too tired to enjoy it though. Uh, but I could stay there till noon the next day. If I do that, check it out in the morning. Maybe Monday, probably won't be anyone there. I do want to be a little ahead of schedule tomorrow though because uh, I don't want to sleep all day. Hang out at the lake all day. Because there's a detour going on for the Wainuchi Lake Trail. And the detour that I've heard is signed is different than the one Dave talks about in his book. I didn't bring the book. But I downloaded a PDF. I think I have a map of that area that, that works. I might have starred one of the roads or something, I can't remember. I think he's talking about 360 road, decommissioned road, so skipping the trail, like do Maidenhair Falls and everything, and then uh, get back on 2294 or whatever it is, and take that to the old decommissioned 360 road. That skips a huge part of the trail. I think that the sign detour, you know, which may not be, that may be old info as well. The sign detour would give me more time on the trail and still skip the part that has a lot of blowdown and washout. So uh, hopefully that's just really well signed and I don't have to even worry about it. Otherwise I'd probably be going with Dave's recommendation. So I want to have time to find the uh, Chetwoot, the abandoned Chetwoot camp. <clears throat> so I don't want to be like super late that day lollygagging around because I got to deal with this detour situation. I still have time to find Chetwoot. That sets me up to go past Sats of Lakes for the last night, or Sats of, Sats of Center for the last night of camping. So I gotta kinda alley-oop everything. And that way, the last day will be kinda gravy and I won't have to worry about being late for me and my wife for the rendezvous. And hopefully we'll have service that last day too. Oh yeah, when am I gonna send her money? Well, I'm not gonna stop. I'm trying to keep going right now. I know I lose service up here. So we'll just have to wait. She told me she's probably good till Thursday on fundage. But I wanna do it by Tuesday because PayPal takes a while sometimes. We still use PayPal because we're lazy. She's probably be using Zelle. This must be the descent towards the Brown Creek turn, which I definitely don't want to take. <laughs> but I know we gotta climb after after the intersection. Boy, the bees are much more frisky right now than they were last time I was out here, which must have been the end of June. There is a lot of talk online of a bees nest on the Church Creek Trail. It's, 
a pretty significant size and in a pretty bad place. I'm hoping they've moved on. But one smart guy said, uh, you can just get over it at night. And since I'm not going two ways, I'm just going one way. I could just have dinner and everything and then try and get past the bee's nest at night. I don't know, just keep night, keep hiking with my headlight on or something, I don't know. They'd probably be hiking bike at that point anyway. I don't know if I'd find a good spot. I could also get up at like four in the morning to get past the bee's nest. I'd rather do it at midnight though or something, or I don't know, 10, 30 maybe. Now with the bike, it's tough. You can't just jump over the nest and start running. Uh, I don't know. It's hard to carry this bike for more than 10 seconds. And I can't lift it very high either when it's loaded. So, I don't know, man. Hopefully there's no bees nest. Fucking road. That's cracks. These paved roads sucker you into it because you get rolling so quick. I mean, I'm not going too fast. Probably going 20, 20, probably 20 right now. If it was gravel on downhill, I'd probably be really skeptical of the road, you know, watching out for washboard and potholes, but. Gravy pavement just makes you lull yourself to sleep and all of a sudden there's a fucking drop. Gravy, gravy. And then whammo. skeptical though. I think that that rear tire is definitely what's slowing us down right now. We should be flying. I would have inflated it more. But then again it exploded last time so I don't know. Well I'm happy. Tire's happy, I'm happy. brake might be dragging a little bit but the back's kind of loose so I figure I want one of them kind of tight I 
think the back is the newer ones too. I'll probably need to adjust the back at some point. I don't know, we'll just probably have to... I remember adjusting the brakes the whole time last time, so we'll just have to keep an eye on them. Never perfect. I want to make sure I don't turn from Browns Creek, goddammit. Hope I didn't do it already. I think there'll be a sign. Uh, I think I want to take the sign for Spider Lake or something. What the hell are all those people doing there? Is there some trail down the river? I never, I don't remember anyone being there last time. Maybe there's a couple cars, I don't know. It's just weird, this random spot on the side of the road. And they have kids, so it's probably not fishing, you know? Here, this must be my turn. I'm taking it. have to uh, check here in a minute. I wouldn't mind taking a leak and have a cliff bar, so we'll just see if we can find a good place. I can check them out. Yeah, this is definitely, definitely the biggest hill I've seen so far on this little trip. And here we go, the gravel. Back tire seems pretty low, dude. I'm just either really heavy <laughs> or it's leaking. Could be either one. Yeah, we're probably walking. Let's go back to two. Tire is good, man. It's not even hot. Well, it's a little warm. <clears throat> I'm just fat. And the bike's fat. We're all fat. Oh, I'm gonna turn the map on. Oh, I got the CPL on this GoPro. Slow boat from China. Damn thing fell off when I was loading in the car last night. I don't think they're gonna stay on forever. I, mean, I should glue it on or something. Glue it on to the uh, magnetic mount. If I need to take it off, I could just take them both off. I have an extra magnetic mount. Plus, well, super wood comes off if you hit it with a hammer, right? If it has a metal interface, I think they do. They might work good. Yeah, the bees are much more curious than in June. It's probably gonna get worse when I'm having my gels. I grabbed an extra Ziploc right when I ran out the door because of that. So I can put the gel in a Ziploc when I'm using it in between uses.
I don't think I have any gallon bags, though. I forgot to grab a couple of those for trash. I love putting the quart bags inside the gallon bag. So we'll just have a bunch of different quart bags full of garbage floating around in the tote. That's all right. Oh. I'm gonna find the blue bungee I usually put across the front. I don't know what clever thing I did with it. That's the one I use for the bear hang too, so it kind of pisses me off. Oh, this is some nice shade. I don't think I'm ready to eat that though. That's the Browns Creek Road down there, I think. <sighs> yeah, going well today. Aside from these fucking bees. They sound much more aggressive. I don't know if uh, if they are aggressive. Or if I should just leave them alone, I don't know. I mean, I suppose swatting at them never really helps, but your instinct is always to swat at them. You can piss off some of the hornets, I think, though. This is really just a climb to regain what we lost. I don't think we crossed 1200 feet until we're on, on the first turn towards Church Creek. I call this uh, intersection coming up 23 crossover because it cuts all the way down to by sets of center. So we'll be, right now we're heading north into the forest on 23, and later on the other side of the Satsup Hills, we'll be heading south out of the forest on 23. And this section of 23 in the middle, it's called like the Skok Wainucci crossover or something. Various sections are called various crossovers. I just call the whole thing 23 crossover. So it just cuts right through the middle. And so when we get to that, we're turning on our first little side road. And it's, I think it's a normal car road. I think it's just a little rough. And when we get to 600, that's for Basically Jeeps only. And 
that ends of the trailhead for the Church Creek Trail. Yeah, after the top of this hill, let's ride my blowout last time, and then we get to the 23 crossover. I'll mine that shade over there, bro. I don't really want to walk on that side though, because it's the inside of the corner. My blinky lights in the back of my backpack. I went with the uh, normal antidote reservoir the Camelback. Left the crux at home. I still don't want to go in the backpack, but it works better. A little better. It's just more of a, it's not tapered. The crux gets skinny at the bottom. This one's more even, Steven. So it fits better. I think I drink less water with it too, which is good. Even though I don't totally believe the marketing about the crux high flow bullshit. <sighs> Since the quick release, it's the same diameter. Just gonna keep pumping here. I should switch sides of the bike. I will wait a little while. That's the rear brake singing. I don't understand how I can make noise when it's so damn loose. I don't know, man. My next gravel bike, I'd like to have mechanical disc, but not, nothing like this. I'll have to see what we got out there for the high-end mechanical disc. Never had an issue with the hydraulics on the other mountain bike, but I'm pretty paranoid about it. I'm not gonna bring a fucking weed kit with me. I'm not gonna bring oil with me, like mineral oil with me, you know? I could be convinced to bring an extra brake cable. I just don't normally. I'll probably tape the line, cable in the bottom of this basket or something without the liner. Cut the road bike end off of it and leave it long. Or just cut it kind of approximate for the back, leave it a couple inches long. And if he's on the front, just coil it up and zip tie it. Or duct tape it. Or both. Not a bad idea. Kind of wish I would have done it. Yeah, the road bikes all have fresh cables, but this bike uses original cables. Oh, we got a corner coming out. That looks good. I wanted to 
the shade again here. <sighs> Little breeze. Almost a quarter after 12. Pretty good, we got out of the house a good time, I guess. That's about 9.35. Fuck the geese for making a racket. I tried to go out there and make them happy. I don't know what the fuck they us. Oh, yeah, but there's this chicken we're trying to punish for being the queen bitch and picking all your chickens. And so we just grabbed her and threw her in with the fucking geese. And she has been having a bad time. But now the geese are sick of it. I think that's why they're bellowing at us. It's a god-awful noise. back out of there though she's probably halfway down the pecking order right now I bet she's lost weight and stressed the fuck out the other one's here that she's stressed out so that doesn't make her look better and she already wasn't the biggest so I think the two other big ones just passed her ass up She'll be eating at least third place from now on. But yeah, anyway, uh, we got some shit to figure out with these chickens, man. I think what we're gonna do is uh, try and work on the nesting boxes because they're fighting over just the two and the coop has like six nesting boxes, but they're only using the two on the ends because they have the most privacy or something. And they fight over them. And it just creates a lot of animosity and stress. And so, uh, we're gonna make little dividers to put little privacy walls between each nesting box. Hopefully that helps. But then we've got 10 new chicks. They're going to get thrown into the mix here soon. And so that might make the situation with the nesting boxes worse. I think it's break time. I'm not fighting this little gift here. Unless there's bees here. Oh, come on. Oh. Here's the state of the rig. Ditch the pepper gun so I can have an extra water bottle. I think this is more practical anyway. Dog spray. It'll be on my pocket. So even if I'm getting water at the creek and I forget to grab the bear spray, you know, I'll have something on me. It only goes about 15 feet, but uh, if you're getting surprised at the creek, the bear is probably really close. And so, uh, you know, I probably said in their video, but I heard that when they first for testing bear spray, they used this dog spray. It's the only thing they could get pre-made. It's only 0.35% capsaicin, but it worked in the bear, bear spray tests early on. And so, I mean, if you're with the rig or if you think to grab the bear spray, you've got the 30 feet and the 2%. 
but at least at a minimum, you've got the dog spray at 15 feet. <clears throat> and it's just black bears. Everyone always says, just black bears. Well, I fucking know that. All right, I know I'm bigger than a black bear. But, you know, when they get surprised, you surprise each other or something. Um, having the spray is much better than having a firearm. It makes you safer and it makes the bear safer. <clears throat> so, a lot more people that use firearms get injured. People that use sprays, they normally fall over on something and get injured. They never get hurt by the bear. It's always a, some sort of ancillary incident. With firearms, though, a lot of times the bear isn't deterred. Especially if it's hunting you, you know. And there are predatory black bears in the United States, so... I feel like we're almost at the top of this fucking hill. I can see uh, the distance over there, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, I like the dog spray. That way if I'm bending over the creek, I can't hear anything because of the water. I've got something right there, you know. And I <clears throat> a lot less weight on the rig. I'm certain that pepper gun would be good for like goats and shit. But uh, I'm not going high enough to really see the goats. I'm not going to Mount St. Helens this year, I decided. So, no pepper gun. I'm not very good with pepper gun either. I tried using a deer and a bear in the backyard. And I think throwing rocks would have been just about as effective, so. I think it would be good for goats because you can, you know, take your time, aim very carefully, shoot them in the face <laughs> when they're doing their goat standoff. But yeah, unless I go to Mount St. Helens, I don't think I'm gonna be anywhere near goats. Not going anywhere near high enough out here. My sister sees them all the time. To be honest, I'm not looking to see goats all the time. Uh, I'm probably more afraid, afraid of goats than I am of bears when it comes down to it. But also I think the goat isn't gonna fuck with you when you're in a tent. I definitely have a little bit of the paranoia in my tent. That's why I just put earplugs in now and try and forget about it. Okay. We're riding for a minute. How's this thing? That looks tight. Whoa. Pants are falling down. Still haven't added a notch to my belt. I need to do that. Oh. Boy, back tire sure is comfy. It feels flat though. Like I don't have my tires overinflated, so like it feels so comfy. I'm worried about it. But, I mean, I just checked it. It was firm as hell. Definitely hasn't been leaking. I don't know if this is just a little rolling hill or if we're actually getting into the crossover already. I can't tell. Ah, I hate washboard. Oh, the screen is fucked up. Still, the touching doesn't work very well. When I used it in the rain. Yeah, I think we're still just cruising along in the climbing and we're just taking a break. Because I haven't gone past the place I remember having a blowout. I think I deleted the mark for it on the map. Oh, that was a view. We're turning around. Wow. 
I don't know how the GoPro is going to get it. I'm not high enough for that. I don't have the Nikon because this, this trail isn't really known for its vistas. So I'm not expecting a lot of uh, views where Zoom will benefit, you know? But we'll just snap. Snap a couple here. Get one higher. One lower. <clears throat> That's the Skokomish then. That's the one they were dropping logs in last time I was up here and they had the whole trail system closed. Because they were getting blow down out of the woods and dropping it in the fucking river for some reason. They must be trying to reduce the sedimentation rate. Or the, uh, whatever they call the pebble accumulation rate. <clears throat> probably trying to, since there's not as many beavers in the U.S. as they used to be, they're probably trying to, uh, pretend they're a beaver. Affect the river a certain way. You know, that's like, I just was staring at the ground. Ah. Well, I think we get some more climbing after this. Remember this. I think there's a sign here. An elevation. It seemed really dumb. I don't know where it is. I swear there was a sign. Because it wasn't like the bottom of anything or the top of anything. It was just like some random elevation sign. Yeah, I don't know. We're at 1200 or 1400 or something. We're definitely not fast forking tonight. Oh, I thought I was going to have a cliff bar. I guess I just forgot. That's all right. I don't mind being lackadaisical on the first day out. I should be eating now, but... I got the most options today if my stomach gets upset. Ugh, my brain's bouncing. Guys, you know, the wife gets the worst headaches, especially since we started the fertility treatment. And uh, it makes me feel hopeless sometimes. Like I can't help. Helpless, I guess, is a better word. Not hopeless. Some of that, too, like it'll never go away. But. Yeah. Oh, there is the elevation sign. I didn't get a chance to read it. It doesn't matter. It's fucking useless. Twenty-three crossover is where I'd like to know the elevation. I mean, I think I can get up from my app, but. That'd be a good place for a sign.
is where the road really departs from following this river and starts going more through the center of the woods. Ah, forward the river. Can't get away from it. It's got to be a resonance created by leaf springs. It's the only thing I can come up with. I doubt if it was coil springs, all cars have such widely different coil spring diameters and windings and everything. And since it's such a universal thing, it has to be something each vehicle can contribute to. And so with the higher prevalence of trucks on gravel roads and the higher prevalence of leaf springs, especially in the back of trucks, I think it's from leaf springs. I don't know, it'd be interesting to see in 100 years if all the vehicles have independent suspension or something, if the washboard goes away. Or if it predated the... Well, wagons had leaf springs, but they were in rust mainly. You couldn't really keep a smooth... I don't know. I should look it up on Wikipedia. It's common enough, but it probably didn't work then. And you know how people love to find anything to do with resonance and model the hell out of it <laughs> with their fancy differential equations. My trailer has leaf springs, but it's like a single leaf with a little baby leaf at the bottom where the shackle is. <laughs> it's the fucking cutest thing. Yeah, so hopefully someday washboard won't be a thing anymore. You think with the good road maintenance, road maintenance they do up here, once the percentage of vehicles that leave springs drops below a certain threshold, you think it would just not even become noticeable. Especially here, it's not even on a fucking hill. <laughs> Does it make any sense? It's funny, you washboard in the rally car, you don't even fucking notice it. You're going so goddamn fast. I mean, sometimes it'll rattle you apart if you're on a hill. You're going slow and it's like more exaggerated. But this section here, you wouldn't even notice the washboard, dude. I'd probably be, I bet you'd be going just flat out, 85. 85 or 90 here. Kind of third gear in some of the corners. Might heat the shock stuff more than if it wasn't there. That's the problem with using normal shocks or performance shocks in a rally car. They get hot and they can fail from that. So that's why the rally specific shocks have a faster return rate, wider diameter valving. I can perform better by getting back out faster and uh, create less heat in the, with the frequent thrashing. I never got the rally with four Bilsteins. I did these Italian shocks on the front called Del Carbone. Yeah, all right, we broke one. Uh, 
That might have been the road I hit down. I thought it was the next one. I was getting ready to do my tire repair before I got a ride home from Dave. We had Bill Steen HDs on the back. They seem to be all right. The back was stiffer than the front though, so we ran the tire pressure in the back at 15 and the front's 30. Trick. That was fun, man. I don't know. I, I'm curious to see how electric cars affects the sport of rally. I think it'd be a lot more fun, personally. I mean, the engine screaming is definitely part of it, especially as a spectator, but... Uh, The things that leave you on the side of the road are usually related to the internal combustion engine and the accompanying system. You get a completely flat belly pan with no undercovers at all if you had four hub motors on a car. You, you could do this crazy suspension deal without having to worry about axles and CV joints. <clears throat> now, don't get me started on like the electronic uh, stability control you could have with four hub motors and four brakes. But anyway, I'm not, the stability control is one thing. But just the idea of just having power available, not having to stop and pop the hood all the fucking time. Electric steering, you know, not having to worry about power steering failures and shit. All the stuff that just gets hot and breaks. You could have from the back seat all the way to the trunk could be the battery. The drivers would be below the battery <coughs> in the front on the floor. Well, you could put some battery underneath the driver if you wanted, but it'd probably be best for fire fire safety to have uh, just have the battery pack behind everybody. I don't know how it would affect the weight balance. Well, I mean, fuck. I mean, it would affect the weight balance, but... So it's having this crazy all-wheel drive system. You could probably just move the rear axle a little bit to compensate for that or put some ballast in the front. Probably a relatively minor deal. You wouldn't have to worry about 300 miles of range. probably do 100 miles I don't know it just depends it probably mainly depends on your elevation change on the stage we got this one fucking stage fuck what was it called Cougar Cougar Mountain or something I feel like I only got to drive it one time because it was always snowed in. It was so high. That's so much elevation. It always got skipped. But some stages like that, you know, your normal 100 miles of range might not be enough. 
even for a 20 mile stage. You went past it. So it was 2353, right? So at the pave at the pavement there's a Y. Uh -huh. and you want to keep going downhill. Okay. And you'll see the bridge and okay. then the campgrounds on the right. Okay. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Have yeah. a great, uh, great ride. Thank you. So if they don't turn around, I'm getting the dog spray out. Because if I was going to bullshit somebody a question, if I was going to rob them, that's the exact question I would ask here. You want some question that's familiar, so you seem like legitimately like you're asking a question. But it builds a rapport with the person. I think they're legit. Still. <clears throat> that was weird. I mean, if I think that female mountain bikers should be really on guard for shit like that, I'm obviously uh, so fucking huge. I don't think I was going to start anything, but. Kind of sketchy. I gave them fucking solid directions, so hopefully they get taken care of when I don't see them again. Yeah, when I used to drive home from work, man, I would or commute on a bike home from work, uh, Home Depot at night. Anytime I saw a car turn around, I was getting something out to throw at them just in case. I remember one time I had three cans of spray paint in the bag hanging from my nail bars. I was like, I dare you fuckers. They turn around twice. And so if the car goes by you and they want to throw something at your back while well, they're coming at the same direction, they have to turn around three times. They have to turn around, they have to go by you and turn around. And then go back by you and turn around. Well, just twice, I guess. But these fuckers went past me and turned around and went the other way and I saw them turn on the brake lights after they went by me a second time and I was just like, oh man, you guys are going to get it. And sometimes, one other time I actually just got off the bike and carried the bike into the bushes when someone turned around that second time. You know, this is a lot of times it's just drunk kids or something and they're like, oh, let me, <laughs> let me throw a toilet paper roll at that guy or something. But, uh. I don't particularly, I'm not interested in finding out what they're going, they want to throw at me. And yeah, I'm perfectly willing to throw a rattle can through someone's windshield if they think they're going to come up on me in the middle of the night and slow down next to me. Uh, if we're going to fight anyway, or you think you're going to roll me, <laughs> I want to make it interesting. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, here with two cans of mace, it get really interesting. <laughs> yeah, I'm 100% I'm sure those people are on the up and up now. They turned around and went back. But, uh... Still, I, I don't know, I guess I'm a little paranoid from my experiences commuting. And just knowing people. Yeah, if they want to stop and talk to me again, it's going to be interesting.
I think if you do end up spraying people, you really want to have them get the key. You want to get the keys to the car and throw them in the woods. Now, no matter if, the, if you can say, hey, you're going to hand me the keys or I'm going to spray again, or if you reach in and grab them. Because if you take off on your mountain bike going four miles an hour, you know, it takes them 15 minutes to get back to normal, they're going to come after you. And if they have to spend three hours looking for the keys or wait for a tow truck, you know, you're, you're clear. Oh, it would be nice to have a license plate on camera too, but they didn't pass me, which is good, but I'd like to have it just in case. Scenarios, right? Random scenarios. Like, I need to waste my time thinking about that, but my brain cannot help it. I do think the intersection back there should be signed. I actually kind of remember it being signed. I think the roads are numbered, at least I wasn't really paying attention this time. I was pretty sure I knew where I was and got my map out a few minutes later. Looks like we're going to descend again. It's kind of weird. Yeah, hopefully those people are down at the campground, I never see him yet. I won't have to worry about any of my imaginary scenarios. I watched that movie. Damn it, what was it called? <coughs> it took place in Alaska. It had that guy that looks kind of like Gerard Butler in it. Wind River. That's it. Uh, very good movie. I think actually that that really inspired a lot of what Yellowstone is. I saw some cinematic shots that looked just like Yellowstone shots. And the way the standoff with the uh, pipeline employees versus the authorities, that really had a Yellowstone vibe. And so I think that, that that movie really inspired a lot of Yellowstone. Uh, but anyway, they were, they stopped by that meth house to ask about the girl who was missing. Had the fucking Indian kid living there. It's the officers, an FBI agent and the game, honestly, well, he must be a game officer. Hits him with bear spray. Holy shit, dude. He's like, oh yeah, I think I got their number right here. Here it is. And just pulls out this can of bear spray. Nails them. I can't believe that they, uh, that must have been the sheriff and the FBI guy out the front door. And then the game guy was at the back door. Everybody ran out the back and he nailed them with a snow shovel. <laughs> and the FBI gal killed the the guy that used the mace, I think, with the spray. I can't believe she went in the trailer after getting hit with that. Uh, she could hardly see if she kept going. She took like 30 seconds to compose herself and went back in, or went in the trailer. I think it's really stupid. But, I mean, I don't know. It's because the guy in the back's by himself, you know? And he's the best. Obviously, he's the best. He's the hero of the movie. But, uh, you gotta worry about leaving him with all these guys to take care of versus going in when you're almost blind still and getting your ass killed and not helping anybody.
I don't know. Man, it was crazy when those pipeline guys, when the guy in the in the pipeline trailer hit the FBI gal with a shotgun through the door. Caught her straight in the vest though, so she only got a couple pellets past the vest. And that laid her flat, so the firefight happened above her. Blew her off the stoop and she landed in the snow. And then the whole firefight between the sheriff and the pipeline security guys took place above her. And it's, only, it's probably what saved her life was getting knocked down with that shotgun. And then at the end of that, like the uh, our hero game hunter guy was up in the in the tree line, having followed the snowmobile tracks and started sniping off these fuckers. And then they're like, oh my God, where's it coming from? And it's just a great place to put your enemies. And then she got there her gun took out a couple more of them pretty savage all right so here's 23 crossover 23 goes to my left it looks like I'm descending to my right which is just elevation I'm gonna have to gain back but I think it's the way to go I'm going to go slow here so I can watch the screen. I can't see a number there. Make sure I'm on the right road. Wait till I'm in the shade over here. Do not like making wrong turns on a fire road. Zoom in one extra. Just make sure. Yeah, looks good. I'm feeling my stomach too. 2361. I take this all the way to 600. Oh, this is nice. Nice and cool. In the shade. Who the fuck stops and asks a mountain biker for directions when you're driving? It's so random. I always try and be helpful. But that was definitely unexpected. Yeah, this is, this is a pretty decent road here. Lots of water. I think I'm still full of water. I've just been sipping a little bit. I got the two bottles now too, which is a nice, nice feeling. <clears throat> that worked out good for me on my uh, Porter Creek, Porter Trail ride. Dropping the noon into one of them and just slamming it. Slamming half of it and then having half of it with my snack later. Really, really worked good. And the other bottle got me another fucking 12 miles, probably. So I didn't have to, didn't have to pump water that day. The filter's right here. No life straw, I've got tablets. I've got uh, probably two kinds of tablets with me, I bet. Iodine and the bleach ones. I used to bring the life straw too, but it just seemed like too many backup fail safe, whatever. I mean, it comes down to it, you can spink out of the creek too. I like the I like the nice two stage filter. I haven't had the shits once from it. And the only time I used it where where it was sketchy, I used a uh, half strength iodine. I feel like that kind of helps with your uh, 
electrolytes to have that when you're uh i was in the really in the sun that day and really low in water and i feel like throwing the iodine in there your body probably thanks you anyway now have an iodine constantly i've heard it can really feel gross I've got someone behind me i'm just gonna stop oh. Ranger. Yeah, I looked at ranger jobs again. I, I don't know, man. I don't really want to be law enforcement. I have no desire to tell people what to do. But I think the most of them probably. Uh, I mean, you just carry a gun and you have a badge, but I don't really think they're law enforcement. I, I think that that's probably at most of them are. You know. but, <clears throat> oh, I gotta watch my map. Make sure I'm not missing a turn. Oh, there's a tent. Anyway, uh, I'd love to be a ranger, but I don't want to be a cop. I just love to be working out here all the time. <sighs> this just must be washboard I'm in. Yuck. I guess the other thing is cleaning the bathrooms would suck. <laughs> so, if you don't want to be a cop, you don't want to clean the bathrooms. Probably not the job for you. I don't know. <sighs> oh man, that's what they're doing is going to Church Creek Shelter. Clean up something. What to say? I got there's the worst job working the customer service desk down in all. A lot of the Forest Service engineering jobs I saw were also in like the heartland kind of. I'm not, I don't really plan on moving for a job, and if I do, it better be one hell of a space job, you know. Still on the red line. I'm pretty sure the noise is my seat. Oh, I was supposed to take a break sometime, wasn't I? I'm starting to feel my stomach too. I guess it's just been such a gravy ride so far. I'm excited to keep going. I'll just take you to the cliff bar, you know? Oh, this looks pretty flat for a while. Let's see if we can find a nook over here to pull into. Let's do some deep shade here. some logging here. Maybe this is where they're getting their helicopter trees from. <sighs> Alright, so 
goo and the hydro flask. It's, they say it's five servings, it's not quite full. I normally get three servings out of it anyway. So right now we're going for a cliff bar. You know what I should do is uh, take these cliff bars out. Put them in the pocket. Seal this up too. Wish these bees are going to be attracted to the smell, so I'm going to get this put away. Gel away. The cliff bars away. And now I got a cliff bar in a garbage bag. Whew, it's getting hot. There are definitely some annoying bees this time. Oh, let's go straight for quite a while. All we do is hunt climbing on this road before the 600 road. I didn't even see a turn for that. Oh, there it is. I'll put it, I'll just drop a marker there. Oh, shit. Oh, that looks pretty obvious anyway. I'll just make a marker and say turn. So I can see it when I'm glancing at the screen, I'm blind. Not too far. We'll have, we will have. Oh, okay. So we're st we're not climbing until after that road. Perfect. I thought this would be gravy. That's good. Oh. Not much of a breeze here. A little teeny one. You guys probably already saw the road, but. It says follows the river until we turn. And Dave was saying that. Take the Browns Creek Road and follow the creek on the other side. There's some other road over there. <clears throat> but it relied too heavily on that <clears throat> road that's been decommissioned for probably 20 years, maybe 30 years. And so I don't want to have to go all the way around there and then find out that road's, you know, got trees eight feet tall on it. This way we use, I think we use a section of the same road, but we only use it for a couple hundred yards. It doesn't sound like it's too bad. So I put my cliff bars in a Ziploc because of the bees. I've always found them attracted to me and I'm out here and I think that uh, part of it is that we have all the yummy sugar stuff with us. If stars of curiosity, then they smell the sweets. I used to hose my backpack down with DEET. And I'd stick a bunch of empty wrappers in the cup holder pockets. You know, and I think that the... They could smell the sugar more than the DEET. We 
I'll keep drinking here, but I'm gonna see if we can mosey on along to the 600 road, whatever it's called. Pretty sure it's called 600. On this map I'm using here, it's just called the Church Creek Trailhead. Same with this road. But I got the Forester, I made myself a guide when I did this first time with the actual Forest Service maps and I took screenshots and put it in Word. I got a PDF of that on this phone. I probably have a lot of the Forest Service maps too downloaded, but because they're not too big. For some reason the ones I had for Greenwater to Ellensburg were huge file sizes. Some of them were 80 megs. So I deleted all those. That's about herbicide. <sighs> I put two goo tablets in uh, the Camelback. I bought some of the new ones. It's all right, not too strong. I could probably could have done three. Three noon is a lot. Makes it really salty. <clears throat> Two of the goo, three of the goos might be a little too sweet, but uh, well, you know, probably fine. I just wanted a little something, and uh, I'm probably not going to add much when I pump. I probably won't add any when I pump and sell out, unless I have like a lot of climbing going on. And stressed about it or something. I don't know how many noon tabs I have. Probably only a few. I have some Alka-Seltzer too for kind of emergencies. I got like heartburn or... It counts as the electrolyte mix if you're in a pinch, I think, too. And if your stomach's upset because you're bonking, probably can't hurt. I threw a few of those in the backpack. Alka Seltzer Gold, no aspirin. Uh. <clears throat> it's those little things that you don't have, you always think about, they really make the difference, like the Alka-Seltzer and the Noon Tablets and just my vitamin K magnesium bottle. Things like that just make the huge, the hugest difference. You just gotta know yourself and the thing that sucks is you can't go to the drugstore when you're out here, you know, so it's tough to predict what you're gonna need. Oh. Yeah, I had already been taking vitamin K and magnesium after my rides, but I wasn't really aware that vitamin K was part of a recovery strategy. I had mainly just done it when I eat like shit. And I tend to eat like shit after a ride. If I have a bunch of salt, my nose kind of weeps blood. Uh, doesn't always turn into bloody nose. A couple times a year it does. It's usually related to high blood pressure and high sodium intake. And so, I heard other people were taking uh, 
supplements with both vitamin K magnesium in the one supplement. I just threw some of both in one bottle. And it really is a lifesaver. I cramp really bad at night, like when I'm putting on my uh, leg warmers and stuff, I always cramp up. So magnesium helps with that. I don't take potassium at night because I get, I get heartburn a lot of times, not all the time. And potassium makes that worse. So we're getting potassium from the cliff bars and stuff. I don't feel like I'm hurting on that at all. And there is a little bit in the goo, but there's less in the goo than there is in noon. That's why I went with it. Noon has magnesium too, I think. But Cliff Bars have a ton of that. I supplement it at night anyway. So I'm not too worried about it. I think we're good. Alka-Seltzer does have sodium and potassium. So although it helps with heartburn, it also has potassium. So I can't use it really right before bed. I'm gonna make sure I have an hour or so. In case it takes my acid production and overdrive. Board, no washboard for a minute. Coming up on a riparian zone and a creek crossing. <sighs> Means we'll probably be going downhill and uphill. Seven here. Not sure what's gonna happen. Well, I should shut my blinker light off. Double check that when I take the backpack off. Pretty good braille on this one, though. The other one I can't feel as well. Same light. They have a really good button feel on this one. Could be that's easier to get to in the backpack than on the seat post too. Hope that seat doesn't ruin the whole video. I'm broke. I don't want to use my last good seat. I don't need it for the. I don't need it for the uh, road bike with fenders. It's got the same seat as this, and that's kind of where I have a plan for. Not for this bike. I think I'm gonna walk. Just for a change, change up here. Uh, yeah, let's take the helmet off. And we'll catch a breeze. Put the GoPro back on 2.7K. And I turned on hyper smooth because on the boost, on the boost setting, I wasn't happy with the way it was in the mountain bike. So the I'm thinking since it crops the frame even more, it might spare more room on the card. But also any bad aim I've got when I set the GoPro up. 
is going to be worse, and we'll get to see less of the action if it's aimed wrong. Oh, they're working up here, then, huh? Got some dirt in my shoes now. These are excavator tracks, too. Looks like we'll be riding again. Just gonna stop in the shade and take a sip. Take a little micro break. <sighs> no breeze. No breeze at all. Yeah, I could have left the water cube at home. I just, uh, I loved it so much. You know, I can bring it with me and pump and then fill both the bottles with it and have enough to make dinner and wash my hands or whatever. And then just dump it out when I feel like it and both the bottles will already be full and everything, you know? So yeah, bringing it in the hydration pack to the creek seems to work really well. And if you don't really want to haul it around, sometimes I keep some extra on the handlebars here. You can always just dump it out after you distribute it and whatever. Chug out of it for a minute. Get some free water before you dump it on the ground. Sure seems to work great though. So I couldn't leave it at home. Oh, I'd like to bring two of them, man. I like, just keep one in the tote. Doesn't weigh jack shit. Maybe even take the cap off of it or cut the spout off it or something off an old chunky one. Just so you have something with a handle, like a bucket, water bucket that folds up. It's actually a really good idea to cut the spout off. If you know you're not gonna... See, I can tie the handlebars full with the spout. But if you're not tying up the handlebars, you don't need the spout. Keeps bees out of it, I guess, bugs out of it, but might be a bad backup plan to just hack off, spout on an old one and toss it flat in the fucking tote. <sighs> Woo! If this one got a tear in it or something, you could even tape the spout on that one. Just keep the bugs out. Actually, you probably make a little duct tape seal. Just so you can take it off and put it on and just leave the cap on permanently. And I saw, although you would, you get all that flexibility of just having this flat piece of plastic in there. The bottom. What a bad idea. But my extra ones at home, I've got one in each go bag. And then I've got an extra one at home just sitting there. Yeah, we're just saving all the elevation gain for 600 Road and Church Creek Trail, man. It's gonna be just brutal. That's why I'm not sure. I don't know how far I'm gonna go today, so I don't know how much of that shit I wanna do today. If it's gonna be so brutal. Makes me wish I brought a lunch, too. But I did notice some success with going Alpine style the first day and just eating the nutrition products. I actually feel like having a gel right now, so that's a good sign. Got the trail mix.
Yeah, it is about time for lunch. That would be really nice. Ah, uh, would have been nice. Would have been nice. I had five days of food packed, and when we switched to this four-day plan, I three nights, you know, I really I just took out three of the meals. So to have my lunch today, I would have had to take out two. But I was like, man, I should just take out three. I think it's an okay decision. Would have been great with a sandwich. If we had hamburger buns, I could have done a peanut butter and jelly with hamburger buns. That actually wouldn't have been a bad idea. It's funny how when you're out here, everything sounds delicious. Except what you got with you. <laughs> Yeah, the motivation for doing some of the climbing today would definitely be just make sure I can have time to find Chetwood Camp tomorrow. I'd like to stay there tomorrow night. I just don't want to set myself up for a really tough day tomorrow. The next two days should be the graviest ones, so I don't want to screw myself by having Maybe camp too soon tonight. This gloves look small but decent. I suppose if I wanted gloves that bad, I would have brought them. Well, here we go, here's some climbing. No breeze at all. I could probably switch to my short sleeve shirt. The thing with those short sleeves, when I, it's just a little REI short sleeve. It's very not, not very substantial at all. But uh, they don't protect my neck from the sun at all. And since I don't have the hat, so I wanted a jersey today. Have that more substantial collar that goes up higher. I was in the sun on that road for quite a while too. So it was a good call. Now though, I can use a breeze. Yeah, it looks like this climb's not that long. Yeah, I kind of meant to bring Dave's book with me, but I was in the bathroom so I could read it the last couple days. Just read this section right here in my new sheet. I'm just gonna go to one for a sec just to chill, finish this climb out, get over this inflection point. Come on.
This is still uphill. It looks like it's not, but I think it is. I think we'll get a little bit of a downhill though. Across some little creek. The top of the line goes away from me again. Uh, that probably means I go back up. This must be down because it's coming towards me. Little bit of climbing and flow down the hill, it looks like, from the dust. Not much. I guess it's mainly dispersing. Uh, diffusing is probably the wrong word, but. Some of the branches are wiggling a little bit. Also, we're going down because that top of the line's going close to me. Nice. Swing it down a little bit and back up. We're almost at the turn. And then we'll really be going up. Because we just take a left and charge these fucking lines head on. No, we actually uh, still follow Church Creek, but it definitely climbs like a motherfucker. It's gonna be one hell of a day. One thirty. There's a turn. It'll read this notice sign this time. It's gotta be for herbicide. There's water down here at the intersection. Just not seen for a while. Two creeks have water in it, huh? I don't know. I don't really care about this fucking notice, but it does seem prudent to read it and just figure out what it's about. Dude, I can't fucking read that. Get the fuck out of here, you guys. Who the fuck can read that? Fuck it. Sue me. Six hundred road. I'm pretty sure this is for high clearance vehicles only. Doesn't look bad right now. I'll tell you, my right foot has got some soil samples in my shoe. I understand. Oh. 
All right, all right. We need to find the, let's get up here at Wes and pull over on our cliff bar. I didn't make sense to change. Probably not going to. Though. Well, I need bike shorts if I'm going to push the bike all the way up this fucking crazy hill for the next five hours. I'll shut this off for now. I don't know. We'll find a place to take a break. I'll leave the helmet on as we're about to go in the sun. Oh, nice dark shade. Hey, bears. Hey, bear. There's something down there. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. I think somewhere on the straightaway. So we turn into the sunny here. I don't know. I have that disease where I want to keep going. This is where I wanted to make it last time, man. I really wanted to hit 600 last time. Just too bad. Dave showed up and it seemed too perfect. Let's take the lift home. That's funny, you know, first, uh, I was just asking for a ride to civilization as I call my mom. And, you know, his, calendar cleared up because he didn't get to work on the trail he wanted to work on. His whole system was closed off. And then we realized we both, he knew my uncle. That was just pretty funny. And uh, just took me all the way to my parents' house. It was funny too, because when we got over there, he'd never seen the power line on the Key Peninsula and Victor so you got to learn something. And he sent me a book. Goddamn nice book, I think, too. Be really nice to have it updated, though. I think uh, there's probably, I don't know. The thing is, people aren't buying or making mountain bike books anymore. Look at the size of that bug. Get off me. Get off me. What the fuck, dude? Bro, what the fuck was that? I'm gonna have to get Deed out then. 
All right, okay. I feel like there's a cloud in front of the sun now. All right, indeed it is. Even though some guy told me there's no bugs in the Olympics. Fucking jackass forum posters. Black off, what the fuck? It's giant fucking flies. What the hell, man? There was nothing like this when I was out here last time. Fuck, what the fuck? Did I just stop in the wrong spot? Maybe. Of course, this is bullshit off. What the hell? Push the button, Jesus Christ. Get some of my socks. Too. This shit doesn't, uh, hasn't strong, got the stronger stuff inside the tote. Oh shit, that was stupid. Oh no, what did I do with them? Oh, they're on the tote. It's funny, you guys could probably see the whole time. I can't fucking see. Caps on. I was just gonna stop for a cliff bar here. I'm not really trying to take a long break, so. That's the extra park pump. I got a place for that pump, but I'm gonna leave it there for now. I got the mount on the second bottle cage. A fly. I don't know if it put its fucking proboscis on me or what. It looked like it was a mosquito that's a half inch long. I don't think I can fucking stay here, dude. I hope it isn't like this the whole time at Church Creek. Well, yeah, giant fucking mutant bugs. Will send me on my way, I suppose. I don't even need the helmet. Well, I got some deed on my head, so it might not be a bad idea to get on the helmet. I'll just clip the, what do you call this, sternum strap. That was just a branch falling. Away we go. I don't know if I just stopped near a fucking horse fly nest. Or what the fuck? I need to cut my nails. The only reason I didn't is because I knew I'd be using some hand sanitizer and uh I don't know. My nails crack when I use hand sanitizer, but right now they're not too bad. So, I figure if I use hand sanitizer, I can cut my nails afterwards or something. <clears throat> this one was not having fun with the bug spray, though. Well, if this, these bugs are gonna be like this the whole time, this is gonna be one hell of a trip. The bigger, the bigger bugs are, the less sensitive they are to chemicals in general. Same with people, really. You know, kids are really sensitive to chemicals. How random. I 
if there is a lot of bugs out here, I'd be surprised if the lake wasn't just crazy with bugs. I wonder if I stop near a creek or something. I think so. This is like another culvert or something. More like an over the road water crossing. That's probably why they say high clearance vehicles, but I don't think anyone's car can make it through that. The road seems in pretty good shape. The bugs come and go, and I don't know if it's location specific or if they get bored and come back later or what the fuck. Very hot. Hey, bear. Oh man. Wow, really hear the creek. How's the breeze here? Oh. It's coming down the hill. It's weird for this time of day, you think, isn't it?
Hey, bear. I can't really see anything down there, so. Feels like it's coming up the trail right now. The bugs seem to be taking a break too. affected them or what the deal is. I'll tilt the camera down for just a sec. You can kind of see the canyon wall down there, but you can't see the creek at all. I don't know if that's Church Creek, probably. Could still be the Skokomish River, but I think it's probably the creek. I didn't bring a hat at all. So I can't keep the bugs off my head. I should have brought the outdoor research hat, but I didn't use it at all last time. Last two times, really. I think I used it once. I love this helmet in the sun because it still has mad airflow. So, that also means bugs can get in. I just figured the bugs in Eastern Washington would be the worst, but maybe it was the time I went. Bugs weren't bad. So it's surprising to see them out here driving me nuts. See how it changes when we get higher up. I can only imagine it'll get worse, especially the lake, but you never know. I feel like I've been on this side of the bike for quite a while.
Huh. I really hate being surrounded by insects all the time too. How the fuck am I going to stop my dinner with bugs everywhere like this? Might be a reason to sleep in and cook late at night. Well, I'm not really cooking, but just sitting still appears to be enough for these fuckers. Don't fall out. People get windier at night. I remember that didn't really work on Natchez Pass. I kept hoping it would get windy and it didn't. Oh. Well, this is an easier climb than uh From the Green River, <sighs> up whatever road that is. Yeah, makes me wish I had a head net and pants. All you have to do is throw a couple of bands in your sleeves and you don't have to worry about it. I mean, some of these big ones could probably go through your shirt. It's only one layer. Shorts, though. With giant half-inch bugs, those shorts. Kind of a bad idea. I think. I have leg warmers, but there's still a gap between the shorts. I mean, they can fly up the short and bite you in the crotch if they wanted to. Oh, this is nice shade. I'll just keep going along like this. Until dinner time, I guess. Oh, they've brushed this. I would like to dump my shoes out. Something tells me the second I sit down. <coughs> I get swarmed. If there is a hornet's nest up here, I wonder if the flies stay away from it. And if there's like some happy medium distance where the hornets aren't bothering you, but the flies are still steering clear. I think hornets mainly feed, like fuck with bees. It's the most where they lay their eggs and eat and everything, I think. Never know. Oh. oh,
I should start marking the water sources when I get higher because in case I run out of water and can't find one when I go up higher. I don't know if it's going to be a problem at all. I don't know if I'd call it a water source either. Maybe there's just a really good one on the market. Deep in the bushes, though. <sighs> Seems like there's just water everywhere. That's why there's so many flies, is because the water in this ditch. Or something. It must be coming out of the hill. Easier climb now. blow down there really clear on this road man A little bit of breeze, cloud in front of the sun. We're going a ways. 
so the, I marked uh, the turn and then I think the next one is where I heard that hornet's nest was. No, it's the trailhead, Church Creek Trail head. Okay, and then the bees in the, oh, then the lake. I took the bees in the star there. That's funny. So the right one is the turn, the middle one is the trailhead, and the left one is the sets of lake, the big one, the big lake. saw mosquitoes down I was almost thankful it's like hopefully at night the mosquitoes show up and the other bugs are already already asleep or something I can deal with mosquitoes and they don't lay eggs in my food I don't know what we're gonna do about mosquitoes when we're sailing they just fucking bite me anywhere and so like probably have to just take the malaria stuff pretty seriously and uh, I know they have some malaria, I don't know if it's a vaccine, an antiviral, but you have to do it I think every six months. I don't think that your body likes it that much, I think it makes you sick. I'll probably have to do that. There's just no way I can be in a place with crazy mosquitoes. I mean, they bite my nose, they bite through my clothes, they bite through my fingertips, cuticles, you know. You just can't. When we get to the crazy mosquitoes, they're gonna get me. I do think, you know, when you're on the windward side of an island, keeping the hatches shut and everything is smart and hopefully we can I was gonna have like those low low power fish high efficiency ACs I think that what the fuck's their name it's these YouTube youtuber sailors one's a boomer the guy's a boomer and the girl's a millennial and they have a lot of helpful to do videos and stuff, you know, do it yourself videos. And his his little AC for their cabin, for their sleeping cabin. It's a super good idea to have one of those in each cabin. And I was actually thinking one that could maybe blow under my desk. And just run those. if it's not too crazy. That's sort of a minimal power draw to have. Build that into your solar capacity to support that 24 seven. And then have the opportunity to run real AC for the whole boat from solar as well, but maybe not for a limited duration. Maybe just from like, maybe just overnight or just like six to midnight or and then go back to the high efficiency ones only. And then you keep all the hatches closed and uh, try and keep the bugs out. And then when you go to shore, or go out to play in the water or whatever, throw on some DEET or uh, Essence of lemon eucalyptus. Or both. Ugh. Wife says she had good luck with the eucalyptus one. I did too. It wasn't bad at home, but at home things aren't as crazy, you know. Just gonna ride for a minute and see. Sort of changing it up in the opposite direction here. <laughs> this is 
pheasants scare the hell out of me because they just nest right next to the road, right at ear level. <laughs> and they wait till you're right there and then they run like hell. I don't think there's any fires out here. I should have checked. I was on the website, I didn't see any crazy alerts about fires. I know they don't want you to burn outside of the campgrounds right now. But you can burn in the campgrounds in the steel rings. Yeah, what crews going on here? Probably another eighth of a mile at least, maybe a quarter mile. And looks like we head back towards one of the top of the lines. You know, the other thing with the Alka-Seltzer is you can do that almost like a soft drink at night if you want to. You don't have to worry about wasting noon. It's just sort of a fizzy treat. Because I've got four of them, I think. Three or four of them. And I would just, you can use whatever you want, you know. Let's just keep two for emergencies. You can use the other ones for a treat or after dinner, whatever. I'd like to figure out a way to make it kind of taste more like Sprite. I was thinking maybe you could add a tablet of that uh, Bakari Sweat to it, the Alka-Seltzer. Get more of a Sprite thing. I wish Sprite would make tablets like this. People use Sprite and 7-Up for cinnamon cakes. And I think it would be really cool to have a tablet form. I, I don't need something perfect, but it would be nice to have like a, I don't know, some sort of like lemon lime Gatorade uh, mix. And that wouldn't be fizzy, right? And then drop a couple of Alka Seltzer in. And it'll just be dry packable shit you just keep in the tote. I'm gonna hit the bell a couple times for the hell of it. Pavlov's bugs come when I ring the bell. That's weird. To be honest, I'm planning to walk most of these climbs. This one feels alright right now. It looks like it doesn't go forever. You know, I might have that bees nest location saved in my other phone. I want to get moving to the sun. turning into it again. Now we're 
I'm maintaining here. God, these bees are, these bugs are landing on me when I'm moving now. I can't tell if they're just feeling me with their proboscis or if they're doing something suspicious. I'm not a fan now. Well, that's, that's gear number one. I have to swallow the smaller bug. <clears throat> I don't know. Certainly wasn't a half inch one. Strap is kind of pain. I don't know if I've ever been on there or not. I need to adjust it. It's not hanging down. Oh, oh. So we're going to flirt with this top of the line. We are going to cross it, but we're going to keep flirting with the next one until we get to the trailhead. Sounds like a pretty good sized water source here. Wow. I don't think there's a lot of traffic on this road, even on the weekends. Wildlife always seems very surprised. <clears throat> These clouds have me worried about the rainfly situation. I 
I have a few tricks up my sleeve though. I brought enough paracord to do something with the tarp. I got two, two lengths of paracord. I had a third, but it looked like I hadn't used it in a while. So I just tossed it with the rainfly I didn't bring. Also the rainfly had a bunch of guy lines I never used. Threw those out there too. So I have eight or nine stakes. That's all that's left from that range like kit. Use the stakes for the tarp and the tent. If I need them, don't have to use them at all. That's a good water. Well, for a water bottle, not for a filter. But you can always do that too. Fill up a water bottle and pump out of it. Just iodine it when you're done. Yeah, water every 100 feet, man. Feels silly to mark them, but it would be nice to have one firm location nailed down with notes about it in case I stop seeing them. I keep wanting to stop and walk, but the trail keeps looking gravy. I know in my heart it's more efficient to pedal. This bike is such a bitch when it's slow. Another water source. Can't see it though. It's in the bushes. Two twenty. Waterfall on the left. <clears throat> Try and keep going for a little bit here. Almost tapped out right now, though. Looks like it's steeper here, so I think I'm gonna take a break. Go back to this side.
<sighs> Pretty good shade here. Sun's behind a cloud though. <clears throat> so I'd like to keep moving. Almost the trailhead. <clears throat> I like to stop and check out my feet. I'm not sure if I want to change my socks, but get the rocks out of my boots and see how wet my socks are. So last time I was doing so much hike a bike that uh, my ankles swell up, which, which is called a uh, Disney ankle. Interesting thing to look up. It's named after people go to Disney World and walk around all day in the really hot heat they're not used to. And some of the blood vessels in your ankles rupture. It looks like a rash, your ankles swell up. It happened to me before I got to Ellensburg, so it must have been probably Natchez Pass, right? I doubt it was Mill Creek, maybe. Could be a combo, you know, come out with elevation change and stuff. I noticed it in the hotel room that my ankles were swelling up, but it wasn't. I guess I figured it was just from mosquitoes and bug spray and whatever. I figured it was a rash. When I got home, it was pretty obvious it was something else. And uh, you know, after you get back from a trip, usually there's quite a bit of TV watching going on. I just put a couch cushion on the coffee table, put a pillow on top of that, and put my feet up. I got some compression socks on Amazon for cheap that I can wear after dinner. You know, we have a salty dinner, or whatever it makes the swelling worse. Put my feet up with those socks on and then wear them to bed. <clears throat> I didn't bring them out here. Could happen again. I'm sweating like crazy. I don't think it's it's probably only 75 out here, but I'm working for it today, so could could end up with the same thing today. I'm a little better acclimated now though. Of course, it's, for me, it's really specific to bike packing because I walk so much. And the mountain bike, I walk sometimes, but <clears throat> still, it's like 10 or 20 percent of the time when you look at look at it. Seems longer because those are some boring hours, you know. But so it's the first time I ever had it was on the hike a bike uh, on Natchez Pass. Apparently 11 hours, 12 hours in Capital Forest isn't enough to do it, so it's interesting. Well, plus I'm getting older and I was pretty heavy when I started riding. Uh, I think I started early, like January, February. And by March I was kind of like a bike addict and I couldn't wait for school to be over. I've been losing a ton of weight this year. So it's kind of a transitional year for me. It's tough to say what reaction I'm gonna have.
Yeah, it'd be nice if there weren't any flies around. I could take my shoes off and see what's going on. Dream about what kind of socks I should have brought. The wife is the one that says I should wear my Dicky socks. Oh, she didn't understand the wool sock theory at all. I mean, those fuckers soak up so much water. I was just sweating buckets. And uh, even when I got my feet wet in Easton, you know, I was able to dry those shoes out by changing the socks over and over. I'm worried that they, these socks will have less than my ability to do that. And so even though maybe the wool socks were overheating me, fuck, they just are so effective at pulling water out of stuff and drying off and keeping your feet, your feet don't even notice it, that all this is happening. It's kind of amazing. Those socks are pretty beat up. I think I should just wear them again on a normal day, like a rainy day in November or whatever, and then wash them over. Like wear them more, because they need to get washed more. See if I can get them back to normal. Otherwise I'm gonna have to shit can them. They're all fucked up. This is the trailhead. That must be the parking for two vehicles they're talking about. I think on this corner here, the road turns into a Jeep trail and the uh, Church Creek goes straight. Take a look. There's a sign nailed to a tree. That's a good sign. Look at the size of this rock. Huh. Reminds me kind of like this rock we had in my yard when I was a kid. We had two adjoining properties. We spent uh, about 12 years of each, I guess. I don't know. Longer at the second one, probably. But uh, the first one... Yeah, I had a rock like that and we used to climb up on it and play on it. And I had a picture of me. Oh, that road's been decommissioned. This is it. Well, that must have been one hell of a road, dude. That must have been one hell of a road. <laughs> Jesus. Oh yeah, the flies are here. Fuck me running. I hate to say if the flies are here, I'm not stopping. As much as I want to stop here. <clears throat> I didn't even get a, a look at that sign. I'll have to go pro got it just in case. In case I want to see it. Okay, this is going to be some hiker bike, I think, for sure. I knew this was going to be a thing. <sighs> hey bears. I'm going to keep a tight, tight zoom on that. I don't want the helmet on, but I wish I had something to keep the cobwebs out of my hair. I doubt we're going to be able to ride much of this, but that's actually right in front of me. It looks good, but I'm not falling for it. This is one hell of a trail, I think. You guys aren't going to be able to see the trail so well when I'm uh, hiking a bike in here, so 
apologize. If it's steep, I'll be leaning over more and see better. Huh? Trail yeah, looks to be in good quality though. Some branches there. Bugs seem to be more chill in here. Actually the next, uh, well, no, we're going up and up, but I think the next half mile or so might be if we want to stop before we start really doing the switchbacks. We could do it without eating, maybe. And, uh, Hit up the gels in a little bit. Nice and cool. It's a little breeze now. And we'll stop right here. See if the bugs will leave me alone. We can uh, put deed on first thing. Get this. This is my new stool too, where I replaced it with the uh, newer lightweight model which is just cheaper, basically. Cheaper model, cheaper materials. But I'm hoping that the seat portion won't tear. The other one tore, even though it was heavier duty. So I'm hoping they, just, they improve the design here. Is that a carry strap? from here to this other rivet I drilled out and taped over the hole. I don't know, it might tear the first use, but also maybe not. Let's see, a little more strap. Just toss this thing in the dirt, hook the camel back under there so it doesn't go in the dirt. Don't want to spare the off because it's the cheap one, you know, the, or the lower percentage one. The one I want to use sparingly is the 40% in the tote. Stool legs that go in there, they're gonna hurt. Oh, also these, the feet on the stool look improved, like they have a bigger footprint. Still sinking though. Lots of deep. You don't want those bugs. You don't want any of this. Okay, I'll set my glasses over here for a minute. just for completeness. I hope uh, I didn't get any on the GoPro. I have to use a handkerchief to wipe it off at this point probably because everything is so sweaty and gooey with stuff. Doesn't look too bad. Oh, the GoPro thing's flipped upside down. Is that better? Yeah, maybe. Keep this GoPro rig nice and tight. All right, so I want to see if I can look at my socks. 
without being molested by bugs. away maybe if we're lucky I don't know I must put the pump in my pocket for now stool's sinking more I'm not happy about it rocks. Uh, kind of wet. Not, no, not really bad. Not really bad. Putting that right back on. That is really, really good. I'm surprised. Maybe the, uh, maybe the wife was right. And then these cool me off a little better so my feet aren't sweating as much or something. Also, the shoes, I guess, are dry. They've been drying for weeks, so maybe they are soaking up some of the initial stuff. This day is the first day. This one's a little wetter, but uh, really surprisingly, not bad. This foot swells up more, so maybe it's uh, the shoe isn't breathing as well because the foot swells a little more or something. This is the one that had the, uh, we thought it had a broken toe, but that kind of healed and now God knows what it is. But every once in a while I feel it. All right, so I'm taking a leak. Man, we're gonna be climbing, son. Urine's a little darker than I'd like. It's alright though, I mean it's hot. It was the opposite on the Capitol Forest Drive, man. I had to piss every half hour. It was a cooler day, especially at first. I tell you, when you have a lot of deed on these flies, uh, show a lot less interest. I found that it's deet does not work as well at all with bees. It does work, but flies seem to respond well to it. I was concerned because they're so big. I just thought they wouldn't give a shit. I'm gonna loosen the belt and adjust the shirt. Get my shirt tucked in because the GoPro suspenders I got hooked on here. Oh boy. Maybe he just went to get his friends.
Yeah, planning to add a notch to the belt on this trip. I've got a Swiss Army knife in the toolkit with a leather punch on, I think. Otherwise, we'll figure something out. But I uh, wanted to wait a little bit. It's borderline now, and tucking this shirt in makes it even more borderline. So, uh, probably lose a little weight anyway. On the trip. Give it a day or two. All right, we're good to go now. Stool worked out. What happened before is the inside would tear out. And so you see how this has this uh, pocket sewn in here. The other one didn't have that. And this inner fabric tore at the seam here away from the outer fabric. I don't know if it was riveted or not. The rivet doesn't really matter because uh, when you sit down, it forces it in there. But this pocket reinforcement they added all the way around. I think that might make it stronger than the, uh... oh, now the shirt's dirty. Oh, that was bound to happen. Huh? Make it stronger than the heavier one I had, the older, heavier one. So we lost uh, a few ounces, I don't know, six ounces, something. And uh, hopefully got one that'll last a little better. Still fits my same carry case. Keep it clean. Clean ash, I mean, I'm not picky, but where I mount it definitely fucking gets dirty. So it's good to have a case for it. They don't come with them anymore, on the, at least on the cheap ones. I was bummed the other one broke. I had it for years and always wanted to bring it hiking with me. Finally did and it broke. That's okay, this one's better. Let's tuck this string away. I think this one's gonna be better for me in the long run. Plus they're cheap, so if I need to buy one every year or something. And they weigh, uh, I think it's 1.8 pounds or something. I just think it's a better fit for me than those light chairs everyone brings that have you so low to the ground. This is like a good five inches higher. And, uh, Maybe I can put that one just right here on the other side of the deal. Make things simpler for me. Velcro holds it on, that just keeps it from wiggling. Uh, I don't know what I'm thinking. It was in the dirt, make sure there's no bugs on it. Oh. Yeah, so if this stool doesn't work out at all, you know, I mean, it worked out this time, but if it, if it fails me first day or two, probably going to be uh, thinking about one of them chairs everyone uses. I'm not happy about it because they sit too low. Um, and you have to put them together. It takes so long to put them together, I think. People will just pretend that isn't a thing. But, oh, Jesus Christ, look at the size of this fucking bullfrog. Hope you guys can see him. Hey, buddy. Well, listen, buddy, you're moving. I'm sorry, you're moving, though. There you go. There you go. I've never seen a frog like that in, uh, in Washington. Never, ever. We only have little teeny frogs. Sometimes they get silver dollar, maybe. Or the lawnmower gets them, maybe. Whew. It's gonna be a climb. The other chairs, you know, they have a, uh, they work like tent poles, right? They have a little cord in them, a stretchy cord. Okay, that's a, that's an assembly process. And this one, I just undo the Velcro and fucking sit. Now I have to undo my stupid bungee balls and take it out of the case. But I'm also going to have a bungee if it's the air chair, whatever they call it. And it's also going to be in a case. <laughs> so I end up with this, these extra assembly steps and I'm sitting five inches lower to the ground. Probably going to cramp up trying to change my socks. Uh, 
doesn't really tick all the boxes, so I sure hope the stool works. Maybe, I don't know. I really don't like them chairs. I don't like the idea of them chairs. Maybe uh, I could buy a newer version of the heavier duty stool. It's rated to my weight. So if I bought one where I had the receipt, I bought it from, like I bought it for $6 or something when I worked there, you know, it's like a excess inventory. It was screen printed Eddie Bauer. The print was probably bad or something. And so I bought it for nothing. And it's like no warranty, no questions kind of a thing, you know? But I could buy the, the heavier one from their website or from REI and get a receipt and then do warranty claims on it. If it goes out on me, we'll just have to see. If they improve the heavier one with that same kind of pocket, I'll bet you it'll last forever because uh, the material's so heavy. That's why it's the design flaw. And that one I got. Because who knows how old it was. I've probably been around for at least 10 years at that point. Still, looks like they made some improvements. I liked working there. I got fired for telling the manager to go fuck himself. Funny thing is, that's like how we'd say hi to each other in the morning. And we liked each other and then he fired me and it was like bad language. So it was just like a, one day I questioned him or something. And uh, you know, the fucker started the same day we did. And uh, threw boxes with us at first. And like, we all liked him a lot. And then he just stopped throwing with us and just started like being Mr. Boss Man. I don't know if it's because the his boss told him you can't cohort with the fucking work or something and like trying to give him some management advice. Whatever it was, it was the complete opposite because he was doing a really good job as a manager, to be honest. We all trust him. We had him over our house for dinner or whatever, you know. And that's what a manager should be doing. And uh, we would have come in whatever, whatever we, he needed for us, we, from us, we would have done. And then he probably got taught how to be a manager. <laughs> and uh, and I was just always doing the odd jobs to carry, you know, things I didn't mind. But one day, I think he gave me a job just to kind of fucking test my boundaries. I don't play those games. The second a manager is playing games with me, I'm the worst person you've ever met. And I was like, yeah, but you go fuck yourself, Jim. And I got fired the next day or that day or whatever. But anyways, uh, oh, you know, fuck, that fucking guy went to, a, bought a car for my mom until my mom were best friends, basically. Try to get a deal from her by saying we're friends, work the travel chair together. It's like, yeah, you fired me. <laughs> Fucking asshole. But anyway, uh, I always liked working there. I didn't pay shit. But no, something about, I was really good at stacking boxes as I'm tall. And I didn't know that. That was the first job where I really was, aware of my athletic ability, I should say. That was probably the start of everything. I'm gonna ring the bell. I think I hear some people, but I don't know who the fuck would be out here unless they parked on the other side and they're doing, they're kind of late for heading down this side if you parked on the other side. Anyway, yeah, I'd love to work a travel chair again. Uh, I don't know. They could never pay me enough, I guess. 
But yeah, having a local job, just doing some good work. And, uh, you know, when you have a good team and you can just jam through shit. So much fun. Like here, they come in on a Saturday and tell us you unload this container, you can go home, we're gonna pay you for the whole day and just bust through it. Did that on Christmas Eve once. Of course, that gym guy was nowhere to be found. The general manager of the company came out and opened the container for us and said, when you got this empty, you can go home. We stacked most of it. We, we know what we're doing, you know, so we, any work we don't do gets done again the next day because shit falls over and boxes break down from a stacked right. And so, Maybe we had a couple hand truck stacks that we didn't put up, but we stacked most of it. Hand stacking only, man. No, no forklift for the whole place. And uh, being OCD about your box alignment when you're laying your base layers and really pays off. And when you got some dipshit, Some dipshits do some stacking because you're doing something else. You can see it from a mile away and the stack will fall over within a week usually. And then you got, you know, the problem because all the boxes are fucked up. The ones in the bottom failed, that's why the stack fell. The ones in the top landed. And so you got these boxes in the middle that you gotta make your base layers out of. Burger base baconator layer player. And the worst boxes have to go on top. It can be a real bitch if it's if it was done by idiots, though. You end up with a whole bunch of fucked up boxes. And you have to do shorter stacks. Oh. Then what you can do when another container comes in is you can uh, tear those stacks down and put the good ones on the bottom. Then you gotta be careful with dates and everything. Boxes are marked pretty good though from the, from China. Uh, you just gotta make sure when you're, if a customer orders 100 chairs with their logo screen printed, you know, you've gotta make sure they're all kind of the same batch of chairs from China. So you go mix in stacks like that, it can be, I mean, at one point you just, you gotta get them stacked. You can't have half stacks all over the warehouse. And on the other hand, big orders need to be consistent. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. I didn't like screen printing too much. I'd done it before I worked there. And I was really interested in it at the time still. Like I thought it might be because it paid more than what I did, but I'd probably rather not do the screen printing. I'd rather just stack. Not too big on shipping receiving either. Holy hell. I'll pull orders for the shipping guy, but I'm just not big on It's not big on uh, pulling little orders and shit. A lot of times you have one or two chair orders, you know, like me buying a stool would be, and that's boring as all hell. Toss me the orders in the hundreds. I'll get it all sorted for you. I don't want to be the guy though, because he has to deal all the little bullshit ones too. So being a warehouse manager would be cool and being hands-on maybe. I doubt the same general's working. I feel like he actually lost his mind when he was when I was there. And, uh, I don't think he works there anymore. I don't know. No, the family knew him really well, but he, uh, he kind of just lost it one day. And we all worried he's going to kill himself, but then he turned up. I don't know if uh, how that ended up. 
he probably just got divorced and if you got to keep the cars i'm sure you'd find <laughs> people just put all their identity in, in their marriage sometimes and then they don't ever come home to their wife work long hours and i wonder what happened Five minutes to three. Oh, we should probably eat something. I feel like my stomach's still with me, so I'm gonna have a... Oh, let's put this park pump away. Now that we can get to the side of the bike. Should be pretty easy. Pull the rubber band. Let's see. We'll face the air hole forwards. Since the back tire is right there, and put the rubber band back on. Okay, now we got two pumps on the side of the bike, one in each bottle cage. Oh, I was gonna eat a cliff bar, wasn't I? See, I can't even keep track of myself, dude. I'm already sick to my stomach, but one more cliff bar, and after that, we can do gels and trail mix till dinner, probably. That's quite a tree there. I know, the trail should have some blowdown, but it should be, you know, it's it's open. It's not like it's got so much blowdown, it's a big deal. So hopefully it shouldn't be anywhere near as bad as that first part of Natchez. Yeah, I'm definitely sick to my stomach. This is not going to go down well, but... Take our time. I got gel, trail mix, and alka seltzer waiting. Wow. I just realized this tree right in front of me. Holy fucking shit, it must be eight feet around. If I put my arms around it, 12 feet around, maybe 13 or 14, at like six feet high. Fuck. Yeah, so I could probably get not even halfway, and my arm span is six foot eight. Even, you know, curved, I bet you I could probably do a six foot eight arc, right? Around the circumference, yeah, maybe. Probably 14 feet diameter. Or, circumference. <sighs> Whew. Yeah. I'm not overheated, but I'm pushing myself for sure. I'm definitely sweating, but it's sort of, sort of moist in here. It's cool though. It's not, not like it was out there. I doubt it's 75. It's probably 70, but it's moist. Not as bad as capital in the morning, though. A little bit of breeze coming down the hill. See the trees moving? A little bit. Got those big bugs all over me. Oh my god, get off me! Get off me! Jesus Christ. Okay. About 10 seconds from this clipper in my pocket and leaving. I just want to finish this and start chugging water. And lean into that stomach ache. Fuck. I have a D on my hair. <clears throat> I hate moving on before I finish chewing too, because this cliff bars. 
just best to swallow, get it down, and drink some water before you move on. So I'm gonna stay here and get molested. Totally had a rubber band on here. I where it went. I have an extra one. Here though. Grab the GoPro. <sighs> I don't know if the Camelback hose is in the GoPro. I think it's just tough shit because I got me using the clip over to the right and everything. And so it's just got a little bit of spring that's taken to the left. I could turn the mouthpiece outward, maybe. If I notice it's doing that a lot, I might well. <sighs> Bike bashing. I knew this trail would be gnarly. I know how to pick them. It's not as bad when it does the switchbacks. <sighs> I can only hope. <sighs> That's why I lose the CPL, I bet. Gotta watch for it. Every time I clip it, I'm not going back to look for it, so it's gotta be right away. Really wanna lose it because they were great in the winter. On the road bike rides, they probably were great in the winter. The low sun angle. summer they help with the UV haze. In the winter they help because you get lots of dramatic sky shots. And golden hours like seems to happen more often, I guess. Uh, down you go bike, sorry. Better you than me. I was thinking if I should be on the cliff side or the downhill side or the uphill side, I really don't know. I feel like I do both. That works out okay, either way. Whew. 
Yeah, the water in the camelback's warmer than the hose water now. Definitely cooling down. Oops. Oh, that's the wrong phone. I want to see if I had service, but. I don't even think I told my mom I was coming out here. I have to update her. If I hit the panic button on the beacon, they're gonna call my mom and my wife. Or one or the other. And so I gotta make sure they have some sort of info. Also, I'd like to make sure the wife made it home. I want to switch sides of the bike because my left foot has been popping and stuff a little bit. I'd like to uh, give it a little break. I think I have to put that pedal forwards. Oh. I don't think the foot's getting a break over here. Yeah, I just hope something that foot doesn't snap and finally break. That's what I always worry about. And I think we have the volume turned on. Yeah, it's pretty loud too. Yeah, they're fucking working on 302 and they're gonna start working on Highway 16 and it's both for salmon habitat. And uh, the, three, the 16 one really surprises me, but I suppose I support it. But the 302 one's ridiculous. They, they just built a new bridge and then now they're gonna decide to build a culvert under the bridge. And it's like, listen, when you tear the old bridge down, you put a fucking culvert in and then you build the bridge. Like, what are you guys doing? And it's probably just different pots of money, you know? They probably have from state infrastructure budget to do the bridge. It's on some triage list of bridges. And then the salmon money gets doled out. Hopefully they left area under the bridge and they don't have to, I don't know, it just seems so stupid. I feel like someone should get fired for that though. Whoa. Bike almost took a spill down the cliff. I'm dripping with sweat now. Hey, hey. Hearing some weird noises. Hey, bears.
see my birds. Birds or squirrels having an argument. But it could be something eating their eggs or whatever too, you know. If it's birds. Hey bear. Good bobcat territory or uh, mountain lion because the elevation here, they'd be right above you. That's really what I'm afraid of, especially because you probably wouldn't even know they're fucking there until they're on you. Oh, where is that fucking bee's nest? Like I just heard some insects on the ground. <sighs> I know we're in the tree cover. Okay. Yeah. So it's sort of by that whoop de doo after we get out of the switchbacks and loop around to the south side of something. That might be a good place to camp. Even though I kind of. I don't know, I kind of imagine making it to the lake tonight, but I knew that this elevation might be a brick wall in that goal. So, uh, it's just tough to say, you know. Wow, this is one hell of a switchback. Hey bear. Hey bears. The bears. Oh. Wow. That looks like it's better here though. Really reminds me of <laughs> Natchez. <Whew. sighs> Keep turning the brightness down here. 79% already. Maybe I'll turn it off. <sighs> yeah, I guess I am out here for a long time. I had it on all day in Capital and it was like 82%, but I've been out here for so long already. Even though it feels like I haven't gone as far as Capital. I've probably, oh my, well, no. That was 20, that was probably 30 miles in seven hours. It's been less hours and less miles. Probably around mile 15. Mile 20 should get me to the lake. I passed it. So just the lake's fine. I'd love to stay at the lake. I just don't know if it's in the cards today. I'm gonna ring the bell again.
fuck. Well, we're okay. Nothing really happened. It was just a whammy. Kind of got me and the bike, though. I thought I'd be in trouble. But didn't even roll an ankle. One thing, uh, walking off the side of the trail like I've been doing, I step in a nest. It's always a chance. <sighs> Just gotta ignore the map for a while. I hope I backed my phone out of that app though. I feel like there's a breeze up higher and I just can't wait to get to it. Hello, old growth. Of course, there's some younger stuff too, but pretty healthy forest, man. Got the whole place to myself, even on a Sunday. <sighs> See, this is, I, I don't, I hear water down below, but it's like thousands of feet down below. <laughs> I don't know, quite a ways down below, so I can't get to it. I was thinking water might be scarce in this trail. Probably pump if I come across a good one, even if I don't need it. Hell, pick the back wheel up, Jesus. Keep it on that CPL. I'm probably gonna forget and lose it again. Fuck. It's getting hard to find ones that don't have the all the filters with them. I just want the just the CPL, you know. For some reason, I couldn't find them by the same brand. They're probably all the same. I don't know for sure yet. <sighs> up and up. Yeah, I just gotta keep pushing through the switchbacks and get around the other hill. Can't even think about stopping until the bees nest area. Which was on the, the description was like, you have to go on a decommissioned fire road for a couple hundred feet. And then where the trail picks up again, there's a bees nest 50 feet in. Something like that. And so staying on that, maybe there's a nice flat spot or maybe someone's had a fire on that decommissioned road. And that would be a good place to sleep if it wasn't too hilly. Otherwise, I'm probably have to press on to the top, get to the lake. Now, if the bees are there, I might have to do it in the middle of the night. Get past them about 10.30, maybe and uh, just keep going, 
eat dinner before I get to the bees and then push on. <sighs> Try to take a nap in the mosquito shelter if it's cool enough. I think I took a nap in there once just with the two pillows. It's nothing else. Just when you're trying to take a nap, you know, you're tired. It's so much to get out and everything just for a nap. That's another reason for a, a foam mat. You're not gonna wanna pump up your fucking air mattress for a nap. I don't know, unless it's godly or something. Maybe you would. I don't think I would ever, even if it was nice. <sighs> oh. All right. We're all right. Fuck. I'm trying to take it easy on this left foot, and it's not a good example. I think I need to switch again. I don't. Th I think my left foot's just getting destroyed over here. It's bad. I want to take it easy. When it comes down to it, I may not know how to take it easy. Oh, thanks. This is steep. Definitely like Natchez. I know how to pick them. You want to have a shitty time in the woods, just talk to me. I got all the tips. I mean, that's why Dave said take the other road. It's cool up here. Well, I brought that big fleece. I was on the fence about it. I wish I had another light fleece to take, but I don't have any other that have a tight weave that are light. The ones I have, like the other, I'll call them light fleeces I have, actually aren't that light, and they, but they're a loose weave, so they they breathe really well. But they're not what I want. The outer fleece layer needs to be like windproof. Doesn't need to be waterproof. I mean, fleeces are waterproof generally, but uh, I got a hard shell to go over that if it's rainy. But it definitely needs to keep the wind out and pair up with my other fleece to keep me warm at night in the bivy. I hear water sloshing around in there still. something on my leg but there's nothing there. It must just be the wind on my hair. A little breeze is nice. Nicer in a short sleeve. Is this a switchback? Holy hell. It's 
pretty crazy when you have roads this steep and they switch back. Fuck. Holy hell. Oh. This would be a gnarly descent. Some people might like it. I think it's way too technical for me and there's way too many soft areas. You can't tell where they are. You get off, off to one side, you see a line that looks advantageous and you get too far off to one side, you're in the soft shit and you're going over. Oh. Now, if you're all nimbly bimbly, good for you, but I'm going over if I get in the soft shit on the side of the trail. On a downhill. That's like one of my craziest fears is getting too far off center. On Porter, I was hitting the, the forest wall a little bit on your side of the chute, kind of scared the hell out of me a couple times. Porter's like a roller coaster to me, like when you're scared of. Like I want it to stop, but I don't want it to stop at the same time. <sighs> so crazy. Oh no, my shoe's untied. Fuck, dude. Doesn't seem like a good time for this. Uh, let's see. Great, rubber band broke. I already used my extra rubber band. Put that in my garbage bag, I guess. I bring too many rubber bands and then all of a sudden it turns into not enough rubber bands really quick. Come on, don't fuck with me. There we go. Oh, Jesus. Where a cougar throws a cougar above you. They're pretty keen on you right now. Hey, bears. I just hope the cougar go for the get a mouthful of backpack. And uh, I'd fall over like a klutz. That might be the last thing it ever did, getting me falling on it. Or uh, hopefully I'd be coordinated enough after I landed to get the dog spray out. Probably wouldn't take much. Well, that's what got me carrying pocket knives, actually. I was, I was living in a duplex. I just got this mountain bike in 2005. And this guy in Kirkland got attacked by a cougar just on a fucking little trail. I don't think he was out in the forest. I just think he was on some park trail. And he pulled out this little pocket knife and stabbed the fucker and it did not like that. With, with furry animals, you got to do repeated stabbing motions with people you want to slash. People you want to just like cut open like a 16 inch slice of flesh and they're just the overwhelming screaming from the thousands of nerves it can be debilitating to people. But if you do that to a cougar, you might not even get to the skin, you know, because the fur is so thick. So you want to stab them like you're in jail, like that kind of. Shiving in jail is really, <laughs> it's a weird thing. If you were like a martial arts person trained with blades, you would do a sweeping cut on somebody and uh, that would probably be the end of it. 
you would never be doing these like repeated jabs in the stomach. It's just such a weird thing. And, but in jail, I think it might be because it looks like you're punching them. And from only certain angles, you can tell who did what. And then before you know it, it's over and the guy's bleeding out and everyone's gone. So I think it might just be a form over function thing. But uh, yeah, you definitely want to shiv like a prisoner when you have a cougar on you. Just stick that motherfucker over and over again. So that's when I started carrying a little cook a pocket knife and then years later it just sort of became a hobby once I had more money at Boeing. Oh, I was going to say, I took the little Cutco one out because I had too many double D edges and I got this uh, Victorinox Lumberjack Alox out, the nice spear point straight edge, super light and then here's a saw. So I have this saw and I also have the saw on the bigger one in the toolkit. These SAK saws are no joke. I mean, they're just some of the best saws around. And bottle opener. And that's three tools. Blade, saw, bottle opener. Well, they probably count the screwdriver and then... What do they call that? I don't know. So they pretend this is some sort of tool. No idea. But, yeah. Alex Lumberjack, one of my favorites. So I got that next to the three and a half inch Cutco Bullwhip. Here's the deal. This goes in my coin pocket, believe it or not, in these Duluth pants. Here's this three and a half inch crusty old Cutco Bullwhip. It's got lint in it, but it locks up good. Really light because it's aluminum. The whole structure is aluminum. And uh, it's just sort of an extra knife. So if I lose it, it's not the end of the world. And I got this uh, Fisher Space pen here. Since I can't carry a pen in my shirt when I have the GoPro. Coin pocket. Oh. Might as well just take a micro break here and talk about everything else. So then we got this. This is my wallet. My uh, cards and cash there. And then here's the Victorinox nail clippers I just can't live without. This file's really great when it's new. This one's already getting kind of worn down, but it's a pretty serious file. Um, I use those more than any tool I've got. Well, I use the flashlight a lot too. And here's the Cutco uh, gentleman's knife with the double D. And the straight edge. And this, this straight edge is really nice because of how long it is and how thin it is at the tip. So these two are really good combo because this one isn't good at stabbing a hole and stuff and this one is. It just depends what kind of work you're doing. But this is a damn good little carry. You can see the aluminum looks like it's leaving a stain there. Yeah, it looks like I have it the other way. Where the rivets click. Yeah, and then the, uh, of course, the one that gets used the most, to be honest. Knife, at least. This is the one I carry on the outside of my pants. Cutco 2 and 7 8 lock back. They call it 2 and 3 quarter now. I got this on eBay and it's this drill master on it, which I think is pretty funny. But uh, it's got a nice pointy shape to it. The one I normally carry has more of a belly on it. But this is better for being out here for like stabbing cougars, like I said. Oh. Also, I don't really care about this knife. But the other one's just like it. It has more of a belly on it I'm really particular to, so. Uh, yeah. And I think, you know, I, I keep saying I use this one more than that, but more than anything, I think, is the damn flashlight. And it's, this is a Phoenix E12. And I love how you can uh, bump the switch. Put a double A in here. It lasts me for six months. But I just switched it, uh, for a camping trip. Probably put the battery in about 10 days ago. I have one extra AA and three extra AAAs. My backup flashlight in the backpack is a, uh, oh, I don't know what it is. It's a lumen top something, I think. And uh, it's probably got a rechargeable AAA in it, but I brought three AAAs for the headlight. I didn't bring an extra AAA for the flashlight because it's already an extra flashlight, but I could share with the uh, 
headlight. It needs to. I, the only reason I brought extras for the headlight, because that fucker does me for probably two weeks or something without even changing the battery. But if I end up doing an hour long, several hours long night thing, I might want to have extra batteries, but I can't remember if I changed the batteries or not. I think I changed them, but I can't remember. So I just, as much as I didn't want to bring extra stuff, I just threw three AAAs in the backpack at the last minute. I did realize there could be the possibility of a night hike up to the lake, so. I feel like we're getting somewhere here. So yeah, three triple A's. That's what the Princeton Tech Light I found. It's probably 10 or 12 years old, but it was... Uh, it was probably 2007. Something like that, 2006, 2005, uh, yeah, probably 2005, 2006. Well, because I bought the Knight Rider. Mondo Light. Okay. What are you doing, bike? Make your mind up. I think it got stolen. I don't know if I left it on the parking ride or what the fuck. But anyway, Princeton Tech would just come out with a super efficient LED instead of the the Knight Rider thing had a fucking halogen or something, just... This looks prettier. It's just water. One of these plants must be wet or something. Uh, whatever the Knight Rider light was, I don't know what the fuck it was, but it had a halogen light. Pretty ridiculous. Wow, that's a fucking hell of a plant. Look at these poisonous looking berries. That must be what got me on the hand in Capitol. It looks like a broadleaf maple. That must be what scraped me on the arm in hand Capitol. I thought it was weird because it looked like a maple. I was like, what the fuck? But I, did, I was going fast, so I didn't know what it was, really. Yeah, the Princeton Tech, though, was in the early days of the high output LEDs, I think. I paid a lot of money for it, I bet. What it is, it still kind of hacks it for modern light, honestly. I think it would be three times lighter. I think it's just a one watt. So you could probably get a two watt that's three times lighter today. I don't know. But it seems to sip the triple A's, you know. I'm okay with it. I had another headlight that I had in one of the uh, go bags and I decided I didn't want it in there because I I didn't want to buy another one for the other bag. I wanted them to be the same. And they were getting kind of full. So I took some stuff out and that didn't make the cut. But I couldn't find the damn thing. I wanted to bring it instead of the Princeton Tech because it was a much smaller, lighter deal. But, uh, Princeton Tech it is. And I just have it by itself in one of the lumbar pockets on the bag. So I can get to it when we start making camp or whatever. Without having to pack anything. Feels like the Haley property. This crazy hike. I mean, like when you're hiking back to the car and the Haley property, for some reason it reminds me of that. Oh, I bet you were switched back in to up there. I don't know what you guys are seeing. I see like a, there might be another trail up there. Fuck. Straight up. Sometimes some of these zigzags may not be on the map, like on the GIS data for the map. 
when I do the, the route. And so the mileage, like the steepness will just show up steeper with fewer miles. But uh, probably doing more miles today than it's showing on the uh, track. I saw that coming too. All right, let's be smart. Don't be stupid. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. You know, it'd be fun as if like, you know, since your phone's listening anyway, if it could just play the audio and you start singing it, it'd be fun. <laughs> That might be the ultimate meme culture is where it just takes over our lives where every every second of your day is spent making some reference in your phone playing the reference for you and people are just brainless reference bots brainless meme bots you know that might be maybe that's what rush is trying to do anyway huh Maybe Zuckerberg is a robot, a Russian robot. I deleted my Instagram. I feel terrible about it because I loved Instagram for so long, but I just kept getting these emails from Meta. Oh, pretty soon your Oculus is gonna need a dick pic and a thumbprint before we can even log you into it. And it has to be a Facebook account. And and then or Instagram privacy shit changed to align with Facebook. I just was fucking done. Once I deleted Facebook, I had this weird perspective. It's like, first of all, you don't miss it for a second, which is really surprising. I thought I would really miss it. But I like, I needed to delete it because I couldn't have recruiters finding my old Facebook junk. And, uh, Good place for a staircase, guys. Thanks. And uh, anyway, whew. once I deleted Facebook, it gave me this, I, like it felt so great to have it gone. And I didn't miss it at all. And there's a few people I wish I had my number saved in my phone. I mean, I might have their number. I have all my Facebook data downloaded, you know. And it's funny because it's actually easier to find stuff you're looking for in your Facebook data than it was on Facebook. I have all my Instagram data the exact same way. Yeah, it's funny. It's easier to go through your PMs and shit. In Excel than it was in Instagram. Oh. Oh, we're zigging right again before we zig left. Oh shit, don't go down. That's weird. Yeah, Instagram I miss a little more. But the problem was, dude, like, I'd followed some accounts that did reels. And I liked it. You know, I'd say, I let knife pick, knife pick, bikes, 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 sob, sob, and then all of a sudden, a, like a reel with some fucking kids dancing or something. It was fun. It's like a break. But then uh, the last two days before I decided to delete it, this is what I don't like. You know, first the algorithm on Instagram was terrible. It couldn't compete with TikTok. You know, it didn't know. It was just showing you some stuff and it didn't really know how to be super viral like TikTok. But then one day, all I saw was reels. I couldn't even see any pictures from my friends or whatever, other people mountain biking. It was just all fucking reels. And uh, I tried it again the next day and I scrolled for an hour and only saw reels. And I wasn't in the reel thing, I was just in my feed. And I was like, you know what? I'm not here to be some viral guinea pig. If I wanna watch people dance all day, I can go on YouTube and hit shorts and watch it that way, where I can search for a fucking dance video compilation. I don't just, you know, I wanna be able to see what other people are doing as artists on Instagram. That's what I got into it for, was photography. And uh, 
I can't just go through with my 400 people I follow or whatever and delete anyone who's ever thought of posting a reel. Some, you know, I don't know, it's just so stupid. And then close friends is weird because maybe I want to see people, but I don't really want to have my close friends list, you know. Like on YouTube, you can get all notifications. Now Instagram, when you turn on notifications, it's a real pain in the ass, I think. You can't add it to your watch later or something. You have to just stop what you're doing and go to Instagram, which is dumb. YouTube, if there's somebody you want to keep up with, like Paul Lutis, okay? Guy worked for Macintosh, sailed around the world. I read his book. It's funny, whatever, informative. And then, uh, oh, he's into this and that. And I see he made a video about how to make a electromagnetic shield on Mars to keep radiation out of your settlement, whatever. Maybe how to terraform Mars one day. That's kind of interesting. So I was like, you know what? This guy's make a lot of videos. Click the bell, click subscribe. Now, every time Paul Lutis posts a video, I see it on my watch or my phone, whatever. I just click watch later and forget about it. And then when I'm doing homework or whatever, I'm going through watch later. You can't do that with Instagram. And so YouTube is like the only, YouTube and LinkedIn, YouTube is where I keep up with shit. Space, science, social, whatever. It's YouTube, that's it now, fuck it. And uh, you can click shorts on the app and lose your mind like TikTok if you want to. The algorithm still is terrible, which is great because it, uh, whatever you're in the mood for, it's all you're getting, man. <laughs> but anyway, uh, LinkedIn's the place where I actually a true social media app for me. Um, and I don't spend as much time as I should. I really enjoy all the time I spend on LinkedIn, but when I'm stressed out, I kind of avoid it. Like, oh, I don't have time for that kind of a thing. When really I do, but. So yeah, Instagram turned to shit. Popular with the kids right now though, I just saw a Pew, Pew study. 74% of teens use Instagram daily and only like 32% of them use Facebook. So Facebook really made a good call buying Instagram. I do hope they get broken up, but it was an excellent business decision, I think. Holy hell. Uh, it sounds like we're close to the creek. Hey, bears. Just gotta remember to talk. I'm probably making enough stick snapping noises. I'm grunting enough. Just gotta remember to talk. We got Pew found uh, 95% of teens use YouTube, which is really surprising because a lot of teen girls, I thought, I thought YouTube was more of a guy thing. But uh, yeah, they, I guess for makeup tutorials and whatever else, they use YouTube. Everybody's on YouTube, which is great because it's the best thing. And me making these videos, I'm not really a YouTuber. I don't have anywhere else to save the fucking videos. No one's gonna watch them anyway. I'm open to being a YouTuber, I guess. I'm just not, not a face video guy, I don't. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Not me. Holy fuck, where the fuck am I going? Bro, where the fuck am I going? I put the brake on up here and figure out if I can see what the fuck we're doing. I need the bell in front of that stick. I'm gonna put the brake on too. Just want our advantage to do it. I just don't trust it. Okay. Bro, what the fuck? This one first, I guess. Oh. 
I don't know if we're going down across the creek. Oh man, there's definitely good water there. It's really steep though. Is there a switch back here? Oh, it looks like the trail just ends, dude. So sketch. Still shows just zigzagging the same way. I do see a path here. Oh, dude, if we have to go over this. Where? But even if I go that way, I suppose the question is, do we cross the creek or not? This sort of might be a trail and a dead ends. I certainly don't see going over there and around the creek. I don't know if we go that way. Maybe this is another detour somebody made to get over to the trail. That might be it. This might have used to be in the trail and this thing moved. Oh boy. This is a pretty dangerous spot, I mean. Okay, let's... <laughs> I don't know, I thought about putting the helmet on. Walk up here and see what we can find. Holy shit, dude. Should have brought the pruners if this is gonna be what we're doing. Oh, yuck, spiders. Bro, I totally lost the trail. Like I don't see, I don't see going over this. I mean, I might wanna get up there to look That might be something tough to say. I don't trust the map and GPS enough to uh, blindly follow it in one direction. I don't. I'd like to see some evidence of the trail. I could see it coming here. I don't know if I missed a switchback. Oh. Oh, I bet that's a lookout for the waterfall. There it is, see? I missed a switchback. Oh, I thought of that. Well, okay. What does that mean? We're supposed to take a picture of the creek? I know, it looks pretty boring to me. I guess you can see way down there. There's trees out of the way. Certainly not getting water out of that fucking thing. Whew. I'll leave the phone on for a bit. Yeah, I suppose I'd rather be in that side of the bike, this side of the bike. Definitely sucked my stomach a little bit. I think I'd like to turn the bike around up here. I don't know if it's a good idea. Wow, I can pick the whole thing up. I must have really lost some weight on the damn bike. Oof. Okay, CPL. Still on there, check. Got all my stuff.
stuff. Put a couple bugs on me. Probably got bugs in my hair. Okay, so for descending, I want the pedal backwards. I'm gonna try and go as far forward as I can with the bike. Stupid detour. People wanna see the creek. I almost kill myself. Uh, that rock, I think we'll go up here. It'll be a thing. It'll give me some room, that's really slick. Oh. Over you go, bike. Whew. One hell of a switchback, dude. I knew the switchback was gonna come this way because I saw it up, saw it before. Jesus, I've been lost in these switchbacks for hours, it feels like. I'd love to get my gel out, but I'm afraid of the bugs. They're gonna smell it. Whew, it'd be nice if we got to a flat piece of trail just to know we had made the past this first batch of switchbacks. Good place to take a break. Yeah, I think we're just gonna stick to the right on this line. Because uh, I don't wanna get pushed off. Well, actually, I could go farther to the left, maybe. Or, I could switch. Fuck, I don't know, dude. I'm basically kneeling down when the bike is up here already. Oh, Jesus. That was crazy. Whew. Oh, we switched back again. I wish I had my helmet on, but I just need the airflow, dude. I think we should hit a gel. There's no, no harm in hitting a gel because I've got more. I can hit it now, hit it later, hit it again at night. Hit gels all day, all long. We're getting up high now. Let's 
see the trees on the other side of that canyon. That's the ticket. Whew. That's strawberry green. I don't like that that much. The vanilla bean one. Um, you can just down and down and down and it's got like a more rich... Your body thinks it's more food because the flavoring. This one... Uh, Kind of feels like candy or something, like you're gonna get sick if you have too much of it. I mean, they're all candy and you're gonna get sick, but the vanilla bean one sort of fools your body into thinking it's uh, more of a richer food than it is. And you can just take more, more of it. Jesus. Sorry for eroding the trail, guys. Bill's still there. Yeah, so vanilla bean I saved for later. It's the best. I don't know if I'd buy only that. Because uh, buying like a half gallon of goo at one time. I mean, that's a real risk. You're going to get sick of this shit. But at the same time, if you buy a 24 pack of Cliff Shot, you get sick of that too. They only had, I only saw the two flavors that didn't have caffeine, but I wasn't looking that hard. I bought one and I went back and bought the other because so I thought I wanted some more. And I did, and it worked out good. I got through the Natchez ride and Sentry ride, and now this ride was it. It's a pretty good deal. Except now I feel like I have to shit. I feel like other people have scrambled up this being confused from that creek lookout down there. crazy we haven't had to get into any of our stuff yet it's just all been in the let's see it's all in my pocket we're any out of the backpacks just the bug spray and the pump that was in the outer pouch fuck dude oh they put rocks here to get the oh maybe what they were doing is trying to get water to go off the trail to the side there it looks like people have been scrambling. I mean, they may have, but it looks like they're making a stream, little ditch thing here. 
more than anything, keep the trail from eroding. <clears throat> and this rock looks very slippery. I'm probably gonna have to get the whole bike up there again. Oh, come on. Well, half the bike, halfway. I don't know. There we go. Fix the pedal. CPL still there. Oh, next switchbacks in 15 feet. Son of a bitch. This definitely feels like Natchez. <laughs> it's not as long though, thank God. Might have another case of Disney ankle coming up. forever on the map. So that ain't helping. There's water coming out of the hill here, it looks like. Oh, Jesus. Come on, bike. Up you go. Holy hell, go up the hill. Fall back down, piece of shit. Nope, you're not coming back down. That's the end of that. Not allowed. Ugh. Up you go. No complaining. That's for me. I'm the complainer. Oh, this looks encouraging. Switchbacks are usually a good sign. I mean, they... They really make things possible that otherwise wouldn't be. And uh, they're usually it's for a reason to get you up to a good place. So hopefully that good place is now. Of course, I probably have 12 six pushbacks left. for a bit. What's up? Pretty good. You parked over by the lake? <laughs> you got a bike with you? Yeah. Me too. Nice. That's why you hear all the swearing. All right, well, I uh, I can get out of the way here. It's not too bad. Uh, well, I kind of made up my own deal, but try and get to the lake tonight if I can. How long do the switchbacks keep going for?
Okay, that sounds like a while. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, I got news for you. I think it gets worse. Really? It has not been fun down uh, the switchbacks here. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, there's no blowdown, really. How far is the road from here? It's probably only a mile and a half, but it's uh, just... I mean, you're going downhill, but it's kind of switchback hell. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got uh, dropped off by my wife, um, Camp Govey on Forest Road 23. Okay. So I've, I'm only about 16, 17 miles in. Yeah, I mean, how far are we? We're 15 miles in and we started at 9.30. Oh, really? We came from uh, Wainuchi. So yeah, we and went up the gravel roads all the way to... Yeah, we thought this would be a better option than... Uh, an extra thousand feet of climbing, but we were sorely mistaken. What, what's the alternative? There's a, a gravel road that, I don't know what it, what number it is. Um, is it farther north or something? Up. Yeah, it's... it's uh, How's it going? It's south of here. Okay. But it was an extra thousand feet up, and we're like, yeah. oh, like... It probably would have been worth it. <laughs> yeah, no, well, yeah, we realize that now. A few thousand feet of trail, and we're like, eh, or a few, like, a mile of trail or so, like, whatever. Like. Yeah, so the next few switchbacks in particular have some big wet rocks. Yeah. That's, uh, it was kind of difficult for me to get up just pushing. Yeah. But I worry about sliding. I'm, I'm going to go out the other way, so once I'm over this. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I wouldn't want to go down it, so it's going to be interesting. Well, no, it's passable though is the thing. So unless you, you as long as your feet don't slide out from under you, yeah, there's sure. no blowdown or anything, you know. Um, yeah. Well, you should have seen what we just came up. Yeah, I will be in a little bit. <laughs> you think I can make the lake by dark? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, switchbacks go for quite a while, so. Yeah. My map has seemed accurate for when the switchback started, and. So here it's just squiggly and when you get down farther you can see the switchbacks on the map and that's pretty accurate so you can see when it's over. Well, Good luck to you. Yeah, Brian. thanks. Have fun guys. It's not too late to turn around. <laughs> CPL's on. Oh, hey, people are here. Huh? It's funny, I saw a guy up there and I, I couldn't see what it was. That's why I said, hey, beer. But the fact that people just went through means I'm way less likely to see any wildlife. That's good. Half mile of switchbacks. I don't think I'd want to go down when I just went up. Uh, I don't know. I don't think I'd recommend this trail to anyone though, for the bike. Oh, maybe when I read Dave's chapter on this trail again, I'll have a different light when I read his words. I think he hooked up. I haven't seen any intersections. He hooked up on an abandoned road and crossed Church Creek and got to this trail. So where the fuck's that? And he might not know about all this butchery.
They must be even in one day. Well, I guess I could stay at Browns Creek and head farther up into the forest. Go by the High Steel Bridge or something. That's what route I'm on makes it seem like they're using the fitness app or something. I tried quite a few and they all kind of pissed me off. We'll see when I get a Wahoo or a Garmin what I feel like using. I'm kind of looking forward to using their track building software. Now that I was thinking about it the other day. Oh, I should have asked how the bugs are. Fuck. Boy, that hurt my wrist, picking the front up. Fatigue sets in. Yeah, as long as their own feet, slide off, feet don't slide off running. Interesting, I'll, I'll be looking at that gravel road to the south of here with new light too, that's for sure. Yeah, Dave's book is probably more important today than ever because, oh, someone lost a shoe. Fuck, dude. I think they'd probably be better off losing their shoe than coming back to get it. I don't know, man. I'm pretty sick to my stomach, and all I can do is keep going, so I can't worry about their shoe, unfortunately. Not a bad choice for an extra shoe, because they're so fucking light. You guys are watching this, I'm sorry. I'm sure you understand. Uh. Yeah, I mean, it was obviously the guy in the back because the other guys were the Seen it. Back guy would have seen it. I don't even think I want to yell at him. They're so far away, so far down the hill, I can't even hear him. If I would have seen him a couple minutes ago, I guess. Cheap shoe anyway, huh? I don't know if there's such a thing as cheap shoes today. I haven't bought a pair of Vans in a while. I think I did for the wedding. Not Steiner's wedding. Jens's wedding? Someone's wedding. Jens's wedding. This looks better. And there's sun. That's interesting. I saw it sooner. <sighs> oh, I don't know. Were they using SPD? Is that why they bought extra shoes? <sighs> oh, man. It's pretty suicidal walking down this SPD. We have some good rubber soles. Some shade here. 
Oh, it keeps going. Yeah. Oh, Dave will be happy if there's other guys out here. Even if they're lost and not happy. I guess they know where they're going. Huh, that must be the creek gully going through here. Opening the tree line up, I don't know how else it could be. I said half mile until switchbacks were around in the lakes for another mile. I also heard the light kind of comes up quick though. It's tough to tell how accurate the GPS is in the trees too. Yeah, it's funny because the bikepacking.com site doesn't have anything for this. So I wonder what site they're on. <sighs> Looks like we're pretty high, dude. I think the switchbacks are... Well, at least until we get around the other side. Shoulders are getting tired now. Get out of the steep stuff and it's still fucking steep. That's funny. Huh. A thousand feet, huh? Reminds me of the top of Mill Creek Trail. Well, not the top, but... <sighs> Fuck, the top before the top.
Oh, I should ask about the bees' nest too. I, was, I really should ask about bugs and bees. Fuck. Wow, loose to the left. Oh. Okay. Left turn and then a big right turn and a left turn and right turn and we're on the, the big back loop. Whoa. <sighs> I'm just dripping with sweat. Probably getting close to bonking. And Why is this so beat up? It's not even that steep here. Maybe I have that, that problem where I think things aren't steep because I've been doing steep for too long. That's probably what's going on. Toothless. Sorry again about the shoe, guys. Just nothing I can do, man.
holy hell with this trail. I'm really surprised it's so eroded. Must just get a lot of running water here. My wrists almost can't take that, dude. Fuck. Let's pick it back up. Almost to 2,600, and then 2,800, and then 3,000, and then 3,200. 3,200 is it. What do I say we're at? We're almost to 20, so we're like 2,500. 500, 600, 700 more feet of vertical. That's a lot, dude. That's that's like first half a green line. Ah, that's not impossible though. How much is that way? Yeah. It's not crazy. It's definitely a lot. Each 200 you feel. That's for sure. These flies sure mean it. I just don't know what they're doing. I wish I knew if they're mad at me or if this is what they do, if they bite or not. Feet though, with only two water bottles, would be a lot. It only gets steeper towards the summit. It should be pretty much like this all the way until it gets steeper at the summit. This might be the least steep place between here and there, though, to be honest. Like I said, the map just kind of condenses all these squigglies, and, and so the, the elevation profile goes vertical here. Obviously, right now, I mean, I'm almost flat, but the line still shows a vertical. So, this is probably as good as it gets. Hey, hey. Hey, bear. Scratched a big scab on my head. I don't mind getting out of the channel here, but 
I don't like catching it. It hasn't been leaking any. Uh, I know scabs in my head usually just leak plasma, not blood. It hasn't been leaking any of that. As I can tell right now, I'm soaked. This is a hell of a root, dude. 18 inch deal here. Knee scab, all the scabs are getting hit. The knee's healing really well, I'm surprised. Must be the wifey's special attention. Whew. Pretty area now. The trail kind of goes over to the right. Looks like a seasonal creek crossing. <sighs> the helmet visor keeps hitting that scab. I don't want to feel that again. me now. That's what I like to see. Uh, uh, uh. I feel like I got a bug on my lip. I killed it or something. Okay, back to fuckered up obstacles. I don't even know where the trail goes. Looks like it goes to the right. I have to go around this tree, I think. Sort of bashing. Okay, oh, my footing. Whoa, bike! Oh my god, fuck off! Get back up here. Jesus, you trying to kill me? I hate when I can't do both brakes and it fucks me. Yeah, that's the trail. That's, oh my God, get the fuck up here. What are you doing? Work with me. Work with me once in a while. Jeez. up that rotten tree or crossing the creek or what the fuck. I think across the creek. Look at the map, I can't tell. I should mark the creek crossing on the phone in my pocket.
Look, I hear people. Another bike or something. I don't know. That's crazy. There's not much water in this one. I think we crossed it again. I think there's like another tributary. Just a couple of feet. Over this little hump. I should probably stand on that hump when I do my measurement. Killing my wrist, bro. Jesus, no wonder my wrists feel bruised when I get home. percent even with the airplane mode off. I should see how many noon tablets I have, because we only have three. I should save those all for the camelback. If I have four, I could use two of them. How the accuracy is low. Damn it. Well, you know what I can do though? So I can move the crosshair. right over to the nearest part of the trail. Oh wow, we are really Getting into this. I don't think we're making it to the lake today. Huh. Funny. I don't know. We're past 26, so we have 28, 30, and 32. We don't get to 33. It looks like it's like 3250 or something. I don't know. I don't really want to haul a bunch of water up the hill. I'm very low though, so I guess I should fill it.
just get this bag out of here and go down with just the bag. Keep it simple. Fuck off, bugs. Crazy ass bugs. Oh, there's a little pool, but it's down the stream they're crossing. Clean hose, that isn't that clean. This plugged in first, buddy. Before you get all excited. Come on. I want to just do a couple pumps. Get some fresh water through here before I do it. in a few weeks. All right, now where are we going to put this damn thing? Stay there. Hey bear.
That hurt. I don't know what that fly was doing, but it didn't feel good. Jesus. It was on my sock, too. Like, I didn't want to land on the deep. Going through my sock right at the top. Fucker. Big fucking flies, dude. You can't even feel them land on you. It's crazy. Fuck off. I don't want your fucking dirty proboscis on me. Fucking pervert. Alright. Hey, get out of here. Jesus Christ. I don't know how I'm going to make dinner with these fuckers around. I, I don't know, man. Bunch of dirty fucking flies. I wanted to pump this thing a little bit. Not too hard, I don't want to damage it. Sure, I get my bearings here. Set this down for a second somewhere. I don't know. God damn it! Leave me alone. Oh god, I'm gonna have to get out some more fucking spray, dude. Jesus! Kill all my fucking legs, giant fucking bugs. Fuck out of here. This isn't the time to fight with me, Camelback. This is life or death. Oh, you don't like that, do you? Yeah, maybe you shouldn't be on my fucking leg, asshole. Hey, lay on the fucking sock. I got so much deed on my skin. Tote. They're on the tote. They do appear to be deterred by DEET though, they do not like it. Put some of my socks, they're really attracted to my legs. They fly around my head but they don't do much. And they respond well to swatting. But the legs, it's like they learn I don't swat down there or something. I don't know how they all know me when they see me, but they learn that. Cold creek water now.
Okay, done with that. Oh, my shirt's coming untucked. Well, well, I should probably tuck it in because all these bugs. I'm not spraying back there. That's probably because I've been all the way down for the water. Oh. side of the bike trying to switch it up a little bit Doing our lookout to the right. Pretty sure the trail goes straight ahead here. Jesus. Skinny here. side of the bike for this too, even though it sucks. Good footings over here. Huh. Come on. You know, when I was out this way in June, I didn't see a single one of these giant flies. And the wife saw one as soon as we pulled over. She goes, there's a half inch fly in the rear view, on the side mirror. i the mosquitoes with my mosquito shelter, but I don't want to have to worry about something that big getting in there. It must be horse flies. I don't remember. What are the big, well, I guess the ones that bite aren't this big normally. They're a little bit smaller, They're really mean. But they only bite you if you run into them, which isn't that often. And so I don't know what these giant ones are that are very persistent. They must be horse flies. I just don't have horse flies bite. It was doing something, I felt it. Like when they were just, Playing around through proboscis, seeing what you taste like. I don't really feel that. But it was on my sock for a while, I think, and then I started to feel something. <sighs> Maybe I had to poke through to get to my skin. And I felt it having to dig through the sock. I don't feel like it was feeding or laying, though. I feel like it was just being stupid. 
I don't know what trail this goes, it goes to the right. Ooh, my foot hurts. That doesn't feel good at all. Oh yeah, and there it goes over that log. Oh, I hope my left foot doesn't freak out. Now that's some giant ass beetle on the ground. I don't really want to deal with those. I know they have a lot of pheromones going on when you step on them. Not like bees, but started going right for my foot. I probably thought it was a rock tie on there. It seemed to be trying to get away from me, but yeah, little teeny mosquitoes then too. It's funny you have all these giant bugs and then little teeny mosquitoes. So this is some piece of lowdown that they just left here. Must have figured it was scenic enough. Oh, uh, it looks like a lightning strike or, or it was rotten. It's probably rotten, standing dead. Yeah. Oof. Not sure how we're gonna do this. There isn't a fun way to do this. Oh, we should go over now. Let's go further. Deep again. I should drink some more water. <sighs> nice cold water. Whoa, that's way slippery, holy hell. Holy hell. Way slippery. Slick dick. Whew, yeah, it wouldn't have been fun to come down this either. Well, I guess they got their legs under them then. They're probably having a better time than I am right now. Uh, probably down past the switchbacks by now. Five o'clock. I wonder where Dave's old fire out is. The trail kind of splits here because that branch it's kind of stupid. I think we could just move it. I guess we're all too lazy to move it. So I hate seeing these holes in the ground. Could be anything. Could be nothing, could be a bee's nest.
Yeah, okay, so the trail goes across here and goes up. And this is just a detour on that little branch. Kind of weird. Wow, that's steep. All right, I'm gonna take my time and find a footing and drive over my foot. I really find it reassuring to have the map up. It's just something else to distract me, I guess. We are going nowhere fast. Nowhere fast. We're going up. That counts for something, doesn't it? road they were talking about. That an extra thousand feet. Whew. The switchback kind of felt like it was unannounced. Well, maybe it is, and there's one, two, three more after it. Oops, don't let go of the brakes, dude. Oh my gosh. Come on. Oh. tight. <sighs> Definitely feel like I'm gonna have to take a shit. Hope that's not the theme of the ride. So far it's humping bikes up hills. I guess that's reasonable. What's the break? It's like, what the hell? It sounded like a bug. Like I stepped on it and I was going to get attacked and I look at my foot go. Just the back brake making some weird noise. Maybe that's where they come out of the woodwork for me. They hear my brake singing their love song. 
Yeah, there's a switchback. So three more switchbacks then. And this is all before we even get to the summit run. So this is still the pre-summit ascent. Footings here, though. That's what matters. Oh, yeah. I feel my ankles not liking it. Are they swollen? They're not swollen yet. Probably will be when I eat dinner. I felt that pop in my left foot again. Thank God, it just seems like it's stuff moving around and nothing actually snaps. It still scares me. It's really disconcerting feeling. So this one and one more I'm saying, right? I don't know if I'm dropping sweat on the screen or what's going on. I don't see any sweat drops. It's nice we're in the shady side of this hill, even though it's a little depressing. It's been a nice, cool deal. Oof, Jesus. Oh, I don't know, dude. Well, if the bees nest area doesn't have too much bugs, maybe I'll camp there because uh, there's no guarantee the lake won't have worse bugs. Lakes usually do. <sighs> I can see the lake in the morning. Late morning, probably. After the lake, it's a pretty short jump to fire up. something. Come on. Looks like they're riding down this. That's encouraging. That should be the last of this batch of switchbacks. According to the green squiggly line, of course, which is very approximate. But much more accurate than the red squiggly line, which isn't squiggly here. What elevation are we at? Oh, 2700. Yeah, every 200 feet you feel. Why am I still going through cobwebs and those fuckers came through here? That's so fun. Oh 
another switch back. Oh. Oh, into roots. Holy hell. You guys, this is a climb. Into crazy roots. Okay, front wheel, go. I'm dripping with sweat. Okay. Ah, oh, micro break time. Fuck these horse flies, dude. Thank God they don't like deep. Oh, the visor's coming off. I kind of need that, you guys. Oh, fuck's sakes. There it goes. Let's turn that around again. Oh, up and up we go. Just never fucking ends. You, know, you just can't quite see the expansive view. They're too far in the thick of it. It's kind of a bummer. I heard that though, so I didn't bring the mic on. Jesus. I don't get it. What was that? Did I piss off a bee? Oh. Oh. Wow, my knee hurts now. That was not fun. I think I had my hand on the rear brake cable, so it kept it applied. I really just wrenched it. Put a strain on my knee. Not fun. Not fun. Hey, bear. Oh, what the fuck? These bugs are really taking a keen interest in me. I'm moving too slow to like keep them at bay. Okay, I'm gonna zip off with you. Jesus. Never ending prey 
of bugs. <sighs> Ow! Fucking pedal in the wrong spot. Motherfucker, like I have time for that. Son of a bitch. So tired of that shit. Oh, now I hear an airplane drone. I thought it was more bugs. <laughs> oh. That's one advantage of SPD. It's much harder to s the pedal. Look at this fucking bug. Lands there and cleans his little proboscis. It's so gross. Fuck off, fucking bugs. I feel like I've just did it half an hour ago, you know? Oh my god, this bees nest thing just feels like it's never going to come. We're almost at 2,800 feet though. It looks like the trail turns away from the 3,000 foot line and then parallels it for quite a while right before you do your final 250 feet to the summit. So we'll just keep going. I think we're going to get some flat train soon. And that's probably where the fire road ends up being. Let's see, that tree was cut down. I wonder if this road used to come through here. This might have been that road I saw down below. Makes a lot of sense. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm talking about, but there's like this huge cut through here. It could have been an old fire road. We're waiting for an old fire road crossing. It both ties us in with Dave's trail recommendation and with the instruction for where the bee's nest is and possibly what could be a camping spot if it's flat. It makes a lot of sense at this point as long as, I mean, if, like I said, the legs are, the bugs are probably worse at the lake. And so, I like, oh, fuck my foot, oh my god. It scares me so much when it does that. It's such a deep, disconcerting feeling. I'm just so worried it's gonna snap, and break my foot in half. Oh, it hurts when I put pressure like that, Jesus. Well, let's uh, put that foot up here then, maybe. Oh, no, that didn't help. Ooh, every step now. That's not good. I'm limping. I think it's a precautionary limp, so. Don't do anything, phone. Just stop it. I did not put a point there, you motherfucker. Delete. I want to confuse myself. 2800 on the dot. Okay, and now we go away from this at like a 70 degree angle and then we turn right and parallel it. Which tells me we go up one more hill and then hit flat. Some time off. 
off, but fortunately we're still charging up this hill. It feels like it hurts more on this side. The last time I switched sides, I ended up immediately overdoing it more than I was on this side. Oh, I'm taking a break because there's no bugs. Well, they're coming back, but they're taking their time. And little baby mosquitoes. Yeah, I don't really think I care about camping at the lake. Knowing how bad the bugs are, I think it's probably smarter not to. Oh boy. That's a climb. I feel like the foot can support my weight just fine. But when I'm doing something stupid and dragging the bike up a hill, like you get this really high load for a few seconds. And this means I feel like things shift around on my foot. Very scary. Okay, this could be the old road. <laughs> it's definitely growing up. Unless there's a trail on it, I don't think you're using that road for nothing, Dave. Sorry, buddy. <sighs> Still on the topo line. This one doesn't have the circle of uncertainty like the other one does. Oh, well, maybe it does, it's just in the side of the triangle because it's small. It's been following me for so long. Oh. Oh. I do not want to break my foot, dude. Come on, son of a bitch. This sucks. It's like the worst stage of regrowth. Oh my God. What a dog shit trail right here. Oh my God, I have to go through this shit. There's no way I can camp anywhere near here, dude. How the fuck would I? Oh. Look at this dog shit. Well, that gets us up to the road grade, though. Maybe that's when it gets more. Let's turn the brightness back up. Oh, fuck you. I just want to get up the cell without hurting myself. Now all of a sudden my foot's acting up. 
Come on. Up you go. What do you want? What's the deal? <laughs> that thing said like go 2.1 miles to an intersection with an old fire road. Uh, that 2.1 miles is all your day, dude. Fuck me. Jesus Christ, just a bunch of weeds. Some of these could be that poison overall that I've seen. They have berries early in the season, don't they? I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. But now there's probably more bees because there's flowers and shit. Oh, this is actually not too crazy up here. Wow, interesting. So that's the road that goes over to the right. By where it's sunny over there. So they dug that ditch for the water and put the culvert in the trail. Maybe camp here. We're right in the middle of the trail though. Which isn't that fun because the animals use trails, you know. <sighs> I'll make a mark for road just for my notes. All right, so we're around that corner and then there's the bees nest area. Oh, I don't know. It's possible to camp in the middle of the trail here. I don't think you can do it off the trail. Oh, I need to put my helmet back on. Oh, I want to take a shit. Well. I might be camping here if I can find a spot, so let's just try and wait. Because I don't want to get to the lake and have bugs be bad. Okay, I might fall on my ass, Jesus. What's going on? Now we have a creek crossing. First the road crossing. Oh, they tried to put a culvert here, but the trail got washed out. This is gnarly. It's just gnarly because I don't have anywhere to be. The bike's on the trail. I should probably get down on the creek. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna get down on the creek before something bad happens. Oh, my shoe's untied. Great. Motherfucker. <sighs> Motherfucker. Well, just set the goddamn bike here. Oh, that's right, bike. You don't move an inch. Stay right there like a good little bitch. I don't know, man. The lake might be the only place that makes sense. I don't know how I'm going to stay here for hours waiting for dark if there's a bee's nest on the other side. That nah, doesn't look too crazy still. Well, the bike's holding up. This piece here 
kind of holds the rack bracket inside the frame just for safekeeping. It is, just keeps it in there. Um, I don't think it transfers much load, but I still think if something bad happens, that might be the first thing to break, and that's why this is an extra one. That's the only extra part I got for the rack right now, besides the epoxy. <sighs> okay, I should stand the bike up before I move over here. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <sighs> Bike's not going to be happy about this no matter what, dude. What did I say? Mike is not happy. Don't hit me. Fuck over. Out of my way. Stupid bike. Now go up the hill. That's your job. Fuck off, bugs. Jesus. See, I, all the buzzing going on, I won't know when it turns to hornets. <laughs> you know, I'm really worried about that. All of a sudden, I'm swatting at a bunch of hornets instead of a bunch of stupid flies. Could mean I'm six inches from the goddamn nest. I've just been so exasperated by all the flies today. I don't even notice the difference. big rocks from the road. If you pull them, they make big holes. Like somebody put rocks all along the side here, all careful like. This is a natural cutter if they blew it up with dynamite for the road. Probably dynamite. <clears throat> so all these little baby cedars are right there. They look like cedars, but they're growing out like juniper instead of growing up. I don't know, that one's getting taller. Oh, hopefully this levels out. If it's level, I might have an option. This is not a fun trail. I don't know, I mean, no, I do know, it's not a fun trail. Now Dave is basically saying hook up with the trail here. But unless there's a trail on that abandoned road, you ain't doing that. Quite a trip. Must have been quite a road. It's 
probably the same road we were on because I saw that cut going up the hill. Oh. Oh. Yeah, that left foot is not happy, man. It was not like that. I overload it, man. Something rolls out of the way and it really hurts when it happens. The, uh, my ankle's not swollen in the shoe hole, though, so you can tell it's not broken. It would swell like a motherfucker. Shoe hole. Ankle shaft, maybe, is what they would call it. I don't know. Shoe hole. <laughs> oh, I don't think there's anywhere to fucking camp on this piece of shit road, dude. Everywhere you look, there's just huge rocks poking out of the road. And where there's not, there's huge trees. I mean, not little trees, but I'd be picking trees out of the ground to lay my tent, you know? Fuck. That's so stupid. Well, I mean, some of these trees aren't going to be able to, aren't going to be allowed on this trail because they're going to encroach, but they won't get cut for another five years or so. In the meantime, they'll help the trees next to them. Spit up, shoot up faster. Oh. Oh, I wish there was a tent site, son of a bitch. Yeah, again, there's little weeds I could, oh, there's trees. This spot, I see there's rocks. I have a skinny tent, so. I could pull off some of those weeds there. I don't know. It's possible there. I think since I'm an idiot, there's no bees, I'll just keep going. It's only a quarter to six. Maybe by the time I get to the lake, the bugs will settle down. Okay, now we're taking a left. Now the bees nest is after we go up here in a log across the trail or something. I'm gonna see if I can take a piss real quick without any proboscises flying towards mine. Fuck, I, I just can't do anything. I can't stop for a fucking instant. Get the fuck off me. Oh, I just gotta hold my shit in and hold my piss in and not fucking eat and just keep going. These fucking bugs. Get off me. I wonder if I can get the bug spray out without. Yeah, oh yeah. Cause I have crazy long arms. All right. I definitely didn't want to waste all this shit, but holy hell, what choice do I have? The 40% doesn't have that much left. I was hoping to save it in case I really needed it, you know, but... Okay, don't fucking fuck up my leg, you fucking pedal. God damn it. Let me stick this deet right here. Look at that, huh? Okay. Up the staircase. This shit's fucked. Fuck you, get out of here. Oh, are those bees now? Hey, keep your proboscises off me. I can't tell if those are bees or the same stupid flies. Oh. Jesus, what was that all about? 
I was worried I wouldn't be able to tell the insects apart when it mattered. It's really stupid. I don't know, I came out here in the spring and I felt like I was too early, but now bugs are a nightmare. In the spring, it was just the road maintenance. It wasn't done yet. There wasn't no, there wasn't no chance of snow out here when I was out here in 622 or whatever. But, uh, especially at 3,300 feet. You might have seen snow, but it was certainly wouldn't be covering anywhere. Okay. Now that's a fly on me, right? Or else I'm gonna have to wait here for hours if there's some crazy bees nest. Well, those guys made it over it, but they didn't tell me anything, you know? I wish I would've asked them. I said, no, there's no bees nest. Or yeah, but they're pretty slow. You just move quick, you know, I, which I'm probably not capable of doing, but. Hey. These are bees. These are different. Different than those flies. Yeah, they sure behave like those flies. Hey, you guys are cocksuckers, you know that? That's all I know. Okay, I don't want to get hurt. Let's go down this carefully. Oh, it's so hard to ignore these damn insects. But they haven't done anything to me yet, really. So many species of bug flying around me, I can't even tell them apart. And every like pinch and every like touch of a blade of grass, you think it's one of these crazy. Let's see, here is one of my. Yeah, they're ground bees or something. They have stingers. I don't think that's what I saw earlier. I saw these giant flies with these huge proboscises on them. These are more reasonably sized ground bees. They're bigger than the ones in my house, but they're uh, more what you'd expect. I was always surprised how small the ones in my house are. I wouldn't call them hornets. So that must not be what, what the concern is. This is a crazy road cut to see from up here. So thick vegetation here. Sorry if the camera isn't adjusted right. You know, I just, I don't have a gimbal. It can't be adjusted for everything. So. That was the nest. I'm going, going, going. I'd like to stop somewhere safe though. Maybe someone pushed the log off the road, so. This is where it would be, anywhere in here. So 
so scary. <laughs> okay, I'll stop here. All the other bugs disappeared too, which that went to my theory if there's actually hornets around. The flies and bees might keep clear of them, especially the bees. And some moth shows up and I, sk I jump. That's nail, that's a man-made step. Now there's a big log across the trail, or near the trail. That could be it. I'm okay with being cautious about hornet's nests. So we're climbing up to that 3,000 foot line now. And we switch back, the trail gets gnarly until the 3,300 and that's it. 3200. Like I said, we don't quite get to. Probably goes to 3250. Oh, very quiet here. If that's the log, dude, I'm in trouble because what the fuck am I gonna do? Bike is so goddamn heavy still. Fuck, bro. <sighs> How do people go under that? though. Son of a bitch. Yeah, I have to drag the bike through there. Which isn't the worst thing. I should put the helmet on. That's a ground bee again. I don't think I'm ever near their nest. Well, ground bees aren't usually that crazy, so they, I might be really close to their nest and they wouldn't even freak out about it. Oh, well, this, this isn't as crazy as it looks, maybe. I definitely want to go through there first. Probably hands and knees. Oh, for fuck's sakes. Can't pull a, pull a weed out of the ground with me. Great. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to uh, hands and knees this. I could have done it before I stuck the bike in the hole. It would have been easier. Okay, forearms, army crawl, here we go. Really not as dirty as I thought I'd be after that. Don't fight me on this bike. No point in fighting it. <sighs> okay. 
Okay. Clean my knees off. Spray some radia on my legs, I guess. I know I won't have an infection in my gauge, gauge, gouge on my knee because it's soaked in deep. See, now I'm like feeling meth spiders and shit. These things are fucking with my head. I'm trying to stay on airplane mode tonight. <sighs> All right, we're past, way past these nests. We're almost to 30, 30, zero, zero. We should keep curving around to the right and switch back. Oh, I got this thing up in front of me right now. Oh, I didn't have the bees in this location though, so. All right, no bees in this anymore. That's good. And those guys probably would have stumbled upon it anyways if there was but in a different location. They probably just had the Forest Service come out here at night and chainsaw it out. Wow. Jesus, what the fuck? We're on flat ground. What the fuck? Just go. <sighs> CPL's still there. That's a surprise. Oh. Well, I guess we're making a play for the lake tonight. There's nowhere else to fucking camp. Maybe we'll be fishing it and there will be less bugs. Well, anyway, I should be getting there late anyway, so. Oh, I can kind of see some exposure over here. I don't think we're gonna get the views on this hike. Just the view of the lake and the forest views, so. I'm sure if these plants are all polite. <sighs> what? What a crazy trail. So Dave was on this part of it. This seems pretty well behaved though, aside from being overgrown. And if I switch back near the summit, I mean, that's, near, that's expected. You know, the fire roads do that too. <sighs> Motherfucker, just stay where you are, bike. And stop fucking with me. 
Don't need you fucking with me. <sighs> Jesus Christ. Oh, for fuck's sakes, just stay on the trail. Son of a bitch, why do you slide everywhere? Oh, here's a log. <gasps> Don't you even. What is your problem, bike? Jesus Christ, just stay upright and stop freaking out. Such a fucking piece of shit. This bike is just the worst bike. I've always hated this. Well, I haven't hated it since 2014 since I got a real bike, I guess. This would be what I would, would think the bees nest would be in, but. I do hear something. I don't think it's right here if it's on this log. Still, I'm probably gonna alert them with my bike's fuckery. seconds okay come on Mike don't be a piece of shit roll on the trail and don't fuck me please don't fuck me <sighs> Jesus I'm in the sticker bushes all the way dude Come on, quit fucking with me. I don't know how people ride tandems with their significant other. I can hardly get along with the bike myself, let alone another person with their opinions about what's going on. There's no way. There's this YouTube clickbait. I, I haven't watched it, but two people sitting next to a tandem and they're like, we, we broke up. It's like, yeah, that's why they call them divorce makers. Same with two-person kayaks. This is common knowledge. Tandems would be for fun zipping around your friend. I certainly wouldn't put your wife on it. Especially not for anything long. I'm sure there's exceptions, congratulations, you know. But with the divorce rate as high as it is, <laughs> coming up with a list of hobbies that make you a higher risk doesn't seem like fun. Hey. Hey, 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 bear. I think I was actually here in my backpack, but I'm not sure. It's kind of flopping around because the lumbar isn't tied on. I just do that when I get lazy. So I take the bag off and on. And I'm not really riding. Oh yeah, this is the start of the switchbacks on the map. Almost to 3,000. 
We just got to get the 3200 and some change. Decent switchback. We just cut up here and then go for a while. I think that's a good sign. dark now anyway eight o'clock yeah we're probably really pushing it let's turn the brightness back down Those guys going down and out, they've got good campsite options. I don't. Oof. No options. Huh, actually I'm on the good side for this. All the footings are on the left. Sorry if I didn't hold the GoPro long enough for the image stabilization to let you guys see it. I'm just trying to inch along here. Switchbacking. Stop for a sec. <sighs> Past three thousand. Two hundred and fifty feet left at all this. We're in the 90 percentile here. Oh. Jesus. <laughs> this is one overgrown switchback here. Oh, come on, buddy. Can't be a pain in the ass. Yeah, I don't know. The other side, having the rear brake in your hand, no matter what, seems to be more helpful. The front brake, uh, Okay, 
now we have some persistent bugs again for some reason. They're like transient now. It's like they're getting ready for bed and don't have time or something. I don't know. Whoa, come on. guys can see something I know having boost on crops it tighter Jesus Christ almost fell down to the other switchback bike would have landed on my head No rush, that's for sure. You know, even if we got there late, there'll just be less bugs when I make dinner. I like to be able to do dinner without the headlight. I use the headlight for setting everything up. Wow, we're really going up on this one. Up and up. Oh, here's some view. I don't know how you guys can see. I'll try and hold it for a second. Come on. Hey, bear. It's the bears. Oh, there's a big mosquito now. Keep the big ones up by the lake. Five times the size of the other ones I saw. Maybe the ones I saw earlier today weren't mosquitoes and they were little moths or other little things. They moved like mosquitoes though. Yeah, that mosquito got me right through the jersey. Son of a bitch. Uh oh. I think it's begun with the mosquitoes. rock because I don't have room. Oh, a turn without a switchback, just a nice turn. What a trail. Yeah, I think I would have rather been on the fire road those guys were talking about. I just don't know if it exists. Must be, I don't know. Oh, Dave was telling me about some fire road too. I can't remember.
every time I get past something like that, I want to make sure there's no bees. But then look at this thing. It'd be a fucking bees nest. I'm actually surprised at how there's not bees nests and stuff right now. Maybe colony collapse disorders. Spread to the wild stuff more than we knew. Thirty-two hundo. Oh, I'm so far from the lake. This trail's so long. I mean, I thought it was much shorter. Jesus, that's fucking steep. Okay, let me think. Let's move the bike over. Get a footing. Always start with getting a footing. Yeah, I think I prefer when I'm on the uphill side, not the cliff side. This happens quite a bit though. Stupid maple leaf looking fucking plants. Oh, Jesus Christ. My life keeps flashing before my eyes. These fucking bushes. Whoa! Fuck, bike, what are you doing to me? Jesus. Bro, I thought we were a team here. Slippery log just took the front wheel downhill, man. CPL's still here. <sighs> I don't see how we're gonna get to the lake by eight. I don't want to push it when I'm running down the other side either. Do not want to crash. Okay, just go up the fucking hill. Jesus Christ with you. Everything's a fucking argument. Everything. With your little baby ass wheels. Piece of shit. This is some steep shit, bro. Oh, God, just go up the hill. I don't like having to carry you every fucking inch of the way. Oh, you son of a bitch. Son of a bitch bike. I should just throw you off this fucking cliff and just walk. Oh. Son of a bitch. behind me a cougar wouldn't be hunting me from downhill and uh, I don't see anything else so there's nothing behind me
I'm thankful it's cool. But yeah, I'm getting sick to my stomach again. Oh, the shin kick game, I see. Oh my God. I fucking hate this bicycle. Why? I should get my fucking head examined why I bring this bicycle out here. Oh, fuck me. Honestly, I don't know if every bike I take bikepacking I'll hate this much. Probably. I'll bet you. But if I learn how to not take shitty fucking hard trails that are terrible mountain bike trails, maybe things won't be so bad. I guess it all comes with experience, huh? But for now, I get to hate this fucking bike as my full-time job today. Okay, let's just get the pedal stuck in the wood. Let's just fuck us every way we can. <sighs> Don't, oh my God. If I had a gun, I'd shoot myself. Just behave. I should be able to adjust things without you freaking out. Just fucking relax. Jesus. Bugs have died down. It's a really good reason to keep going tonight, man. Not that I have a choice, but it's really motivating to not have to deal with the bugs right now. Oh boy, that's fun. Let's just slide down the fucking hill again. How about you go up the hill? I know it's a novel concept. Lots of standing deads around here. Switch back into the right. Which is probably good news, even though the bike can fall down the cliff. Makes me less likely to. <sighs> Go up the hill, you piece of shit. I mean, I'm carrying your ass by the frame and you still won't go up the hill. It's exhausting. So you gotta roll both your wheels by hand. They don't carry all your weight. Such a piece of shit. Oh, I think we're immediately switch backing left now. Great, that's fun. Let's just do that. Let's just do that. I gotta think of Oh my God, this is a vertical thing. <sighs> huh, I don't know. 
That side I have to contend with the tree, this side. This fucking stem. Whoa! Bad idea. Keep it on the handlebars. Oh, I need the brakes. Man, I almost could put my hand in quite a spot there. How the fuck am I gonna do this? Oh, for fuck's sakes. Get the fuck out of here, dude. Get off me! Bugs are back. Okay. I feel like hooking the front wheel on this tree somehow so I can get up there and pull it up. Oh my god. These bugs. Why are they back? Why are they going for the side of my head? Oh, and now they're going for my legs again. Oh my God. Okay, glasses on. Come on, go in the helmet. Don't fight with me. I hate when this thing... Oh my God, what the fuck? Stop it. Jesus Christ. Fuck me. Oh. This fucking bottle. You've got to fucking vent it. Or it just stops working. Stop sliding into the woods. There's no reason to slide into the woods. Oh, it's just a piece of shit bottle, I guess. I don't know. these plastic caps before I leave the house too. I never fucking, I don't think they matter. I just, I uh, don't want to litter. All right, if I put the bike up there, it wants to fall backwards. Because, oh my God. My load is falling off. What the fuck? Son of a bitch. Let's just break it down then. And... Okay. Okay, don't do that. Okay, whatever. Motherfucker. You know, we've got this 200 feet of climb to go. Maybe we just carry this thing. And then the bike, I can get up this steep shit. Come on. make the bike just 10% easier to handle. This is really not that heavy. I did a good job packing. Let's see if we can put this stuff under the uh, bungees or something. can't even get my ass up here. How am I gonna get that bike up here? Oh, I'm gonna cramp too. Where'd the thing go? Oh, it's on the other side. Okay, we're fine. We're fine. Everything's 
Everything's fine. Let's see if we can get my ass up here. I don't know. I paracorded the bike or something. Anyways, let's go for a walk with just this for a while. so close to the top, I think I'm just going to play leapfrog. Uh, I had to repack the thing anyway because the bungee was... ratchet strap was coming off. This isn't a bad... This step is pretty good too. Nothing to sneeze at. Oh. Oh my god. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Jesus Christ, dude. Well, let's try it forwards way. Um, the, uh, the bike, like we did the last time without the weight on the back and see what happens. I can always drive it up the uh, bushes here and lay it down too, or something. Okay, right now I don't want to trip over the bike and kill myself. I have this tree here, which is raining on me now. Front brake, pick the bike up. Let's see how the bike does now. I can't, if I put it to the right, I can only hook the handlebars to the wheel because the log's in the way. I can't get the whole thing to the right of the tree. But I could put it all to the left and dump it in the bushes, maybe. I mean, other options are sitting on my butt and scooting backwards as I pull the thing up the hill. So be traction issues with my shoes. front wheel I guess and see what we can do. Come on! What are you doing? Come on! Why are you come on drag you kicking and screaming holy shit bike what are you doing back there? Why are you upside down like a bitch? Huh I don't get it. I don't fucking get it. I still have no idea what the fuck just happened. I don't know if the back tire was hooked somehow. Okay. You gotta not trap me. Give me some fucking room, bike. Oh, most wobbly ass. Just every fucking which way you can zig and zag and flip and flop and wobble. Fuck! Son of a bitch! Oh. Now I can't grab where I was grabbing because there's no weight on the back and the front's so heavy. Oh. Anyway, 
I'll just leapfrog for a bit in case there's any more shit like that. We're almost to, uh... Oh, for fuck's sakes, this stupid phone. Bro, I'm... T <laughs> what are you doing? Open the fucking app. You don't have to do anything else. You don't have to do anything else. What in the fuck? Where's my track? Fuck off. Oh my god. It switched databases on me. That's so funny because I can almost not even hit that button. Right exactly between 3000 and 3200. Pretty glad I pumped water when I did. This bike still bites me even with the weight off the back. I think the weight on the front makes a bigger difference because these pissy ass little handlebars, stupid ass fork rake. Piece of shit bike. I'm pissed I gotta go up the trail twice because we're leapfrogging. Uh in case there's any more insane shit like that before I put the load back on the back. <sighs> Jesus. Every fucking inch. Every fucking inch. Saved a point there for no reason, too. Some shoelace, that's probably maybe why they got a shoe fell off, huh? Well, I'm gonna have to move the bike up here and go through your stuff. Oh, just go. Just, I don't want to argue with you about every little thing. Yeah, this isn't fun, but at least when I, I get to go back, I get a micro break. As long as I don't fall on my ass. As long as I don't fall on my ass. Fuck. Yeah, do not recommend this trail to anyone. I don't even know why the fuck a person would hike this. I mean, it's attractive on the map. That's, that's why I did it in the first place. That's probably why those guys do it, you know? Very attractive on the map. It works good with blowdown and shit, but I don't know, man, I think I do want to go ahead like another 50 yards before we give up on this leapfrog because uh, it looks like the trail's changing character. And uh, this looks steep. It'd be interesting if we're 
getting closer to being done with this steep shit. Looks like we're cresting a little hill here. It's obviously not the big hill, but... Oh, I was right. Definitely a little hill. Oh, okay. show you guys stuff by moving the GoPro the, the straps kind of fight and it loosens it a bit oh my god like I need more of that Oh, that hurt my ball on my right big toe. I just like landed with all my weight right on the ball on my right big toe. And that's obvious, you know, it's one of the places you get big blisters and shit, so I don't like doing that. All right, bike, if you can just drop the attitude for a fucking minute. What giant spider did you grab? Oh, it's just a piece of... It is funny how this isn't any easier because the front end is so heavy. Uh, I almost feel like the weight in the back makes it easier to roll over shit. I, mean, I didn't think today would be one of the made hour film jobbies. Here we are. Whew. I think I'm just going to tie it up, back up to the rack. I don't know what else to do. Hopefully, we don't have to untie it later, but. you bitch get off of there I don't even want to argue with you about shit I'm so tired of arguing son of a bitch every little thing at least my setup's light at least I got that going for me I wonder how the damn ratchet strap came loose anyway I don't know how I'm doing this Where's the tent? Am I retarded? How the fuck did that fall off?
Oh boy, this is going to be a fun night. Yeah, when's the last time I saw it? I don't even know. I put that bungee through it. I always put that bungee through it so it doesn't fall out. Damn, that's my mosquito shelter. What the fuck? We're going back to look for that, bro. I'm going to have to really see this and understand what the fuck's going on before I can get a handle on that, though. Okay, I don't know what your fucking problem is. You have to go under the tarp. You can't go over the tarp. You have to go under the tarp. Giant bugs on me again. I just sprayed with DEET again. This fucking trail, what a miserable fucking trail. Let's just make sure this all looks good. Come on, bike. Up you go. Make sure this all looks good. And there's no tint here, and there's no mistake. No tint here, and no mistake. I'll move the bike a little bit farther along here and put it in the bushes again. Okay, and then I've got my headlight and everything I need really, except for dinner. Let's uh, look with a high-powered light here if it fell here before we go searching anywhere else. I'm just gonna leave the light on high-powered mode. It helps me look for stuff. I was carrying the thing here. It doesn't make much sense for it to fall here. Yeah, I always put that bungee through it. I wonder if I just forgot to put the bungee through the handle. I always put the bungee through the handle in that tent. Man. No, I mean, I can do the tarp shelter, but I don't even, it's not gonna rain. I don't even need the tarp shelter, but son of a bitch, the fucking bugs. The bugs out here are insane. Yeah, so I doubt it was before here though, because uh, I noticed the, uh, This is where I noticed the load falling off, remember? All right guys, I'm gonna shut the GoPro off as I go on this fucking goose chase. Wasn't that far down the trail and uh, the handles are intact so I forgot to put it through the bungee. Oh. Boy, I tell you, for how sparse this tent is, I should feel naked without it. I'd probably rather lose any of the other pieces of gear and lose this. I'm just not big on the bugs, you know. Okay, so we found it. We're okay. 
Oh. Yeah, it was literally like 30 seconds after I shut the GoPro off. It wasn't bad. Sucks, but I can break up the video and the parts this way if I need to. <coughs> I try not to stop it for anything, but when it gets to eight hours, Sometimes it makes it more manageable to upload and stuff. It's in some pieces. Oh, fuck me. I didn't need that. See a couple corners before the big stupid drop. Which is when I noticed things were cattywampus, so I was pretty quick to notice. I'm burning through this water way faster than the other water. I gotta throw the tent. <sighs> Fuck, dude. <sighs> I'm so exhausted. Oh, I'm glad the tree didn't fall out of the ground. Okay, disaster averted, it's seven o'clock. We'll definitely be cracking the nightlight out tonight before dinner even. Fucked up first night, that's for sure. fine until I got on this fucking trail. Rough fucking rugged trail, man. <sighs> Bikes at the top of this hill. <sighs> I still don't want to stop for dinner because the bugs. I want to keep going. Okay, let me see. that well. Hope for the best. After it jiggles around for a minute we can. Yeah, whatever. How'd that damn ratchet strap get loose anyway? Dead tight now. I'm just gonna mosey a little bit here. I don't know what to do next. It's like throwing up. Uh, 
almost a 32 on there. Oh, that might have been that tree that everyone talks about. Huh. It's got like a crazy ass, I don't know. Everyone talks about the tree. Excuse me if I don't have an enthusiasm for life right now. This phone on the dash just cannot figure out what direction we're going. It's just always fucking wrong. Exactly opposite of the direction we're going. And so I leave it on north up. This doesn't constantly spin the screen around being stupid. I'd like to see straight ahead be where we're going on the map. Kind of fun sometimes, but that one can't do it. Something about the angle. It's on the dash, doesn't like, I don't know. Oh, this is pretty. And it's uh, more of a trail you wanna be on. And we're just about touching that 32, so we've got about 50, 60 feet more to go. So we're at the high spot of this trail and the whole trip. All the other high spots will be on fire roads. So hopefully this will be the only reminder of Natchez Pass that I get on the trip. Well, I don't think I'm going to forget to put the bungee through those handles again. I'm not going to ride down this for several reasons. Biggest being I don't want to kill myself and I'm really fucking out of my gourd right now. Stomach's all fucked up. I'm kind of lightheaded. And uh, this bike is pissing me off. So I, oh look at this drop too. I didn't even see that. Hey bears, hey bear. Oh, on downhills, I want to have the pedal back. Imagine that downhill today, who knew? Yeah, that's it too, because we're back at 3200 on the other side, so we've gone over the high spot. I should probably put my helmet back on. Okay, pedal, hold my... Hold me gently there, yeah. Put the helmet back on. Descend for a bit. My helmet's soaking wet. Why 
Why are you falling over? I just wanted to look back and make sure everything's okay. I need to fall over. Piece of shit. Yeah, bears are really active at this time of night too. Hey, bears. I'm always active when bears are active. I'm always getting up too early because I can't sleep. Or staying up late because I'm late. Little meadow to my left. Can't quite really see it. Trees and all that. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure if uh, Dave hated this as much as I do because he uh, took the fire road first, you know. Couldn't do that now. I really don't think you could do that now. you basically be cutting a new trail. So, uh, I don't know, it's worth mentioning especially in a revision, but I would strongly recommend to stick to fire roads and avoid this trail. I don't even know, we couldn't even ride. Yeah, I don't think I've ridden 10 feet on this trail. I think the second we got on it, I just, I knew it was gonna be rough, so I just started walking even on the good parts. And that was very smart, because it is fucking gnarly. I mean, I've gotten hurt, but I haven't gotten hurt bad. It sure has been gnarly, though. I think I'm bleeding from both shins. Will you go? There's nothing there. You're just hallucinating. Yeah, that gully's pretty crazy. I wonder if you can see a leg from here. Probably have to go in farther. some topo lines pretty close together though. So probably gonna be gnarly all the way down. Just strap came undone. Must have just been, it must have gotten wet or something, and, and the webbing in there didn't have enough friction. It's possible I didn't, I pulled it so tight that it didn't get enough lines. It really feels like you're coming up to a lake, but it feels like it's really far away. I'm not going to tell you it'll all be worth it because you can park at the other side and get there in four tenths of a mile. But the experience, I don't know, man. Yeah, I'm glad my my kit, my tote is super light. It's probably 12 pounds instead. Of, it was 25 the first day, first time I went out here. And it's probably 12 now. Really, really got it down. I could have put those other meals in there and it wouldn't have killed me. Just one would have been nice. I could have had lunch today. I have some solid food in my fucking stomach. I don't know, we're cruising. Oh, we're 
tires and it's hard on the brakes, but this is gnarl. <laughs> My foot slipped, dude. On the roof, like to the left. Pretty sketch. Trying to hold the bike and everything, all of a sudden my foot slides out from me. Oh. I can't believe this rack is in one piece, dude. It's fucking nuts. I'm not gonna tell you I'm a good engineer or something. It's just sheer dumb luck. And probably judicious use of ratchet straps. Still tight too. It's good. I really like when the ratchet straps can take and participate in that shock loading. Because they're under a substantial load before it hits the maximum deflection. When well, it hits a drop, it reduces the total range the uh, rack is exposed to. And then there's the hard stop when the seat post one participates because the seat post one's very stiff. The seat post brace it goes to the rack. And all that works to reduce the the fatigue loading on the uh, main bracket underneath the wood. Which I really oh I overdid the fatigue loading prevention geometry I should say I guess include the ratchet strap as part of that because I was just so concerned about the fatigue loading on that damn thing. And there's no way to calculate or FEA that when you have these anisotropic processes where they're, uh, there's layer lines so things are weak and strong in different directions and then it's also since it's 3D printed it's hollow in places with reinforcements in the hollow areas, you know, it's so hard to simulate. Um, I did take one of my prototypes and just hit it with a hammer really hard to break it on purpose, and it, it failed very gracefully. Um, I was very impressed with how hard I had to hit it, but that's that's a shock loading, that's not a fatigue loading. If you hit it lighter a thousand times, you know, what would it, break, what would it do? And uh, that's an unknown still. I've taken all these crazy preventative measures to keep that from happening. Uh, P, uh, PLA also creeps when it's under a high load for a long time, especially at a warmer temperature. And so I was worried about creep. And so the, so the ratchet strap's main job is to take, take that high load, the high static load off the bracket. All that creaking comes from the bracket itself at the bottom, so I mean, it's, it's, it's getting its butt kicked, but all, of, all the choices I made have kept the first service ready part going. I didn't have to put on my backup print that was stronger. I thought about doing it, but I'm lazy. I was like, well, the light one's working, and it's light, lighter. Just stop it in the spare with me. Hopefully it fucking survives this crazy ass descent to Sats of Lakes Church Creek Trail. I know I know I get mumbly when I'm tired. I hope it doesn't too bad in the video. 
I've noticed it before when I watched my videos too. I mean, I knew it was already a thing. I used to do radio at high school, so I know I, I'm familiar with my voice. Hey, bear. What's up there? Who's there? I don't know if I'm seeing a tree and a, a branch move. Hey, bear. It's right behind me. The branch might have moved. It might have looked like something's head poking around. It looked like a fucking cat or something small poking its head up. I think it's just a malformed tree and branch sort of fluttering in the wind. Yeah, there's nothing there. But still, good time to survey your surroundings, you know. I haven't been paying attention. I've been talking, which is good. I'm very good at talking to myself, which is great because it keeps the bears away. And so is this noisy ass piece of shit bike that I always yell at. So the bears know I'm already pissed and they don't want to fuck with me. Yeah, this tree looks so funny from a distance. Yeah, well, we're cruising along. Much faster than we were going up, and we're hardly moving, so what's that tell you about how slow we were going up? I can see sort of evidence of how the low goes to the left there. The bugs have totally backed off. I haven't had bugs in a while. Between that and the disc brakes and me yelling the bike. Oh man, I'm getting really tired though. Like, now that I'm coming downhill, I, uh, my stomach still hurts, but my sweating's dialed down and now I just feel really fatigued. And I feel like I'm, I wanna yawn and stuff. Very tired. It's gonna be really tough to do the bear hang and everything tonight with my chores. Oh, Jesus, this trail is alive. Now we're getting steep again. Lots of rocks and big roots and shit. Oh, Jesus Christ. This poor bike. A little detour around this blowdown. Come on. Listen for bees out here in bees. I'm really wondering if there's more bugs at the lake. If I, maybe I can find a good spot before I get there. I don't know what to do. I'm, I think it's pretty obvious now that I'm going to the lake tonight. Just because I'm stubborn. And uh probably made such a good dent in this. And tomorrow will be kind of a leisurely day. I can descend. My hands will hurt going down the fire road. My hands hurt now, my right hand's on fire. <sighs> I 
But then once we get down to Wainuchi, it shouldn't be too bad. And uh, we can explore down there. Try and find Chetwoot. The quest for Chetwoot. At least I'm on the fire oak. I can use the front brake more. I'm using the rear brake entirely here and my hand is killing me. service. No. Bummer. Poor wifey. I can't say poor mother because she doesn't even know I left. Oh. Jesus, what are you doing to me, bike? Get that pedal back there. Hey, bear. I'd never even see a cougar. It could be 20 feet from me, I wouldn't see it. Now, at night though, you know, you could shine the light. I could shine the light now probably, it's probably dark enough. And really see their fucking Loving little orb eyes, like how cats think you can't see them. That'd be fun with a. That would be really fun with a pepper gun. If you had some cougar stalking you, it thinks that you can't see it, and you nail it between the eyes with a fucking pepper ball. Oh man, I'd laugh my ass off. Problem is, my aim's fucking terrible. Those guns don't seem to be very accurate either. This is sort of a different kind of forest over here, I don't know. Oh, Jesus. It's tough to say. I see some pretty old trees, but maybe it's second growth. That could be what's different about it. Back, pill, back. Like that little creek crossing. Come on. Go! Don't need you stopping for no fucking reason. Oh, Jesus Christ, buddy. You can't even go down a hill this thing. Startled some creature. I don't know how I didn't know it was coming. <sighs> oh, it's the bushes moving the pedal. Five feet. How annoying is that? 
stay. Oh my god. I don't even know what to do with your bike. Every single piece of you annoys me. Handlebars are the fucking pedals. Yeah, these creeks on this side are all dried up. Glad I got water when I did. It really helped me get over there. I mean, I'm probably digesting my own fucking muscle and stomach right now, but... The water helped me. Fuck off with that. Jesus, just stay back there out of my way. I'm trying to drive here. That means you're being a piece of shit every fucking second. Now I'm going to want you in the front and you're going to probably stay in the back. Oh, I hate slippery rocks. I have to stand on slippery ass rocks. Oh, motherfucker, why do you do that? It just moves forward, and it's like it comes forward at the worst time and just smacks you. How far is the fucking lake? It's a mile away. Miles away. Two, four, 400 feet down. Stop and eat dinner here, motherfucker. You know? I think I just gotta eat a cliff bar. I have a fucking choice. Do I have any cliff bars left? Oh, my tent's hanging out the side there. I don't have any cliff bars left. <sighs> Sleep in my stomach. Well, I'll just have the gel then because I'm sick. To Gel really hits the spot, dude. I might be puking a little bit. I don't think it's good to just have these on an empty stomach. But I noticed on the longer road rides that my stomach doesn't mind it. When I'm all feeling shitty. I smell a gel. One more in there. Smaller than the other two servings, probably. Probably more reasonable, to be honest.
get in there. There's no reason not to be in there. Oh, I don't want to argue with you. Oh, okay. We've got an obstacle coming up here too. Someone did a detour and I can't figure it out. Well, I still can't figure it out. I think it goes right. Especially judging by their socket. Oh, for fuck's sake, Spike. Why do you fuck with me? Okay, if you want to go over pedal first, you can go over pedal first. Whatever. Oh, motherfucker. So tired of the pedal strikes. I just don't think I deserve it. Is it because of all the insults? Is it because I haven't replaced your chain? What is it? Be honest. Such a piece of shit. You know, the time they said for the hike was seems really off when you're, I don't know, it's tough to say when you have a bike. I know they were saying if you start in the afternoon, it's going to be tough to do the whole thing and go back to your car. Oh. But I just call that impossible. Not tough. Again, it's tough to judge how much the bike slows me down. I know it slows me down a lot on this kind of stuff. So I suppose it's reasonable. Probably takes me twice as long, maybe three times as long. Stop it, back on the trail. Don't be a bitch. It's a river rock all the way down. What the fuck happened? Jesus Christ. Okay, stop it. Just fucking behave. Oh, this source switch back and there's logs down everywhere. This is nuts. A river rock. Must be a fucking river down this trail. 
the winter time. Now I'm hearing a stream with actual water in it. Imagine that. That's what you get, bike. I want to just smack you again, too. You're such a piece of shit. Such a piece of shit. I don't even know what to do with you. What am I supposed to do, man? Just fucking tell me, you know? I don't have room behind me. That fucking bear spray fell off and I can't reach it. Pretty glad I got that nice headlight with me. Sure hope it still works. Looks like uh, we don't have too much of this steep shit left of me, both from the map and from the uh, look at the lay of the land here. So we just went through two closely spaced and now we've got two more that are spaced farther but that second one's it yeah I think we have a couple more switchbacks and then we're probably in oh well, mosquitoes have found me probably have come from that little creek down there seem to like to lever over obstacles when I'm pushing with the pedal. I don't know. I don't think I'm a fan of that, but it works. A couple more switchbacks and then a couple hundred yards and we're probably clear of the steep bullshit. Get down into the valley. charge this GoPro, uh, charge the battery for the GoPro tonight, the big external battery. I want to just charge it every night, no matter what, even if it means the phones are going to be put in a less favorable position, because I don't like to wait until the GoPro battery is totally dead and I charge it and it fucks up all my battery stuff, because it's like the... This one has half, this is a 10,000 milliamp hour, and the big one's a 24, but the 24 can't charge this 10 twice. Can't do it. There's too much inefficiencies in the batteries, and they both just get hot and lose some of their power and the heat. and beat me to shit all day. It's the only fucking reason. Gear I've got you way all in all weighs less than your fat ass.
Okay, this is pretty fucked now that I look at it. Hey, bears. I can't let go of the brakes. I think what I should do is reposition my body down below. Okay, and the bike wants to walk behind me like a dog. Definitely wish the back end wasn't where it is right now. Doesn't make any fucking sense why the back end would want to be there, but it went there. Okay. Now, a couple hundred more yards. We should be in the gravy. Okay, don't fall over. We just, we're almost to the gravy. Don't you want to be to the gravy? Holy shit. Almost to the gravy. Oh, you fucking bitch. A little lookout here. See some of that, probably that bullshit maple leaf stuff down there. Wet rocks over there. I don't have the acuity to really see the water flowing. I bet you the GoPro can see better than I can. Definitely getting some mosquitoes, but they're a welcome change to be honest. I'm sure I'll hate them in a couple minutes. Yeah, coming in here late, I think is a good idea. Well, hopefully this rock is rise, man. I sure have been putting it through some shit. I don't know. I'd hate to lose it today on day one. I really would. I don't know what I would do. I'd probably try and put some of the other shit in the backpack and then I'd probably try and hang that tote from the saddle like a saddle bag. I mean, if I couldn't fix the rack, I'd definitely spend hours trying to fix the rack if I could. It's epoxy and duct tape and shit. Okay, looks like we're getting more towards some gravy here. And as we go down, Okay, so we've only got 200 more feet before we're inside the top of the line for the lake. I don't know what, you know, 200 feet resolution isn't enough really, but uh, this top of the line is more gradual than the 200, the next one, which is 2600 is the last top of the line and the lake is in that top of the line. So we're, we're within 400 feet, probably within less than 300 feet of elevation descent here. So we're getting there. My stomach does hurt. And I do have to take a shit. And the bike is a piece of shit. I'm tired. But hey, we're getting there. You want to be all upbeat and lighty about how great Bike packing is. <laughs> Those are the other dudes I saw. I mean, the guy, well, like, third guy said to me, it's not too late to turn back now. <laughs> so I know how they feel. I wanted to do all single track bike packing and now I'm starting to see how you really want to do all fire road. I mean, I shouldn't pick on single track. I can't, I've never ridden this bike on nice single track, have I? I don't think so. Uh, so 
some new blow down, it looks like. Let's see if we can go to the left of it though. Oh, I just dropped down, fucking. You know when you skip a step on the stairs and it goes right to your back? It didn't hurt my knee the same as my back. <sighs> I hate that. Oof. Take it easy, left foot. Don't take any shit from this bike. Oh, don't fall in the hole. Why would you do that? Okay, be a piece of shit. What are you hooked on? Why would you get up here? What are you doing? Ah, oh, it's these giant fucking platform pedals just fucking me again. If you were where I wanted you, you wouldn't be stuck in that fucking route. Get up here. Oh, I'm starting to get desperate, dude. Why do you make me beg and plead? Come on. Now I got bugs in my glasses again. Fuck off of there. Oh no. Oh no. Nothing I can do. Nothing I can do. There we go. Wish I could reach that rear brake. Shit. Got it. <sighs> I think that I'm so tired that I can't even walk. And so I'm just making like really bad foot placement decisions. Keep going. Careful with my feet. Careful with my feet. Hopefully the rack survives. Nothing we can do about it. Nothing we can do. Check the tension. The tension's good. When we get to the next top of the line, we're going to be tangent with it, which means it's going to be flat. So that's nice, at least. Hopefully tomorrow can be a nice day. I was saying I wanted to get this done so I could, uh, the next two days could be kind of like vacation days with not much crazy riding. And then the last day after Sats up center there, we would. Be gaining like crazy. Are these blackberries? Don't slide on the rock, you piece of shit. Oh my god, I told you not to do that. What the fuck? Oh my god. You're fucking everything up. The line was perfect. Don't slide on a fucking rock. Don't do it. Jesus. I'm trying to save my own ass here. I don't need to save you fucking constantly. This is dangerous right here. I don't know what the fuck to do, man. Let the bike suicide me? I don't think so. Pedal back, yeah. Mostly. Let's see if we can get over here. Tight 
tires on my fucking foot. I'm gonna die if I don't get my foot out of there. Get off me! Jesus! You know, a lot of times when somebody yells a dog, it does the wrong thing too. You yell come loud enough and it runs from you. Hey, if the anger keeps me going. I think I'm still on the trail. Tarps to tell. Where's the gravy? Boy, I just hate watching that back in. I want it to drag down things and it's just like plops. It won't drag down a fucking thing to save its life. It pisses me off. I remember when I first started doing it going down logs, it worked great. It would drag right down the log and nice and slow. But now it's just dropping. Okay, less than 200 feet to go, man. Less than 200 feet to go. You know, each 200 feet you feel, you know? Every 200 feet does matter. Here, it looks like we're switching back. back again. Hey, however I get my 200 feet down, it only happens once. And then we're at the lake. So we can switch back if it makes it easier, that's fine. We can crawl over fucking blow down logs if it makes it easier, that's fine. Whatever. Pedal's not on a spot though. Trail goes up to the right instead of over the log. That's interesting. That's the first. This is one hell of a trail. go downhill to get to the other 200 line. So if we keep going up now, we're going to have to go down even steeper. I'm not looking forward to that. Oh, fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you, bike. Piece of shit. Oh my God, every fucking inch. Oh my God. Pedal on the back, what do I gotta tell you? Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Every fucking inch. It just never fucking ends. Well, again, Lottie fucking da. Is that 
What's the word of these? 28, 26. Yeah, we have to go down. It's going to be steep then. I don't want it to be steep. I wanted it to be a nice, lovely little ramp. Oh, for fuck's sakes. What are we on now? I'm running out of everything, dude. Totally out of fucking steam. Fuck. I need to go. I don't want to argue. We need to get down to the lake so we can have some fucking couscous. Son of a bitch. Oh, foliage seems to be parting ways. I don't see a lot of old growth. This could be all be second growth. Hit. Fuck. That was a rack killer. Ten inch drop straight down. I can't believe it. I wouldn't believe it if you told me. Your feet. I'm looking down, but I'm not watching because I'm so tired. I can still see it's not. I mean, I imagine the GoPro. Oh, you know what? I should shut the GoPro off. I bet you can't see a fucking thing. I'll see if I can get you guys a picture of the lake, but maybe it'll be tomorrow. Um, Two hundred fifty feet. It looks like still. I must have been mistaken earlier. Yeah. So we'll get we'll get there. Anyways, I'll catch up with you guys.